Where will A.J. Green find himself selected tonight? What impact will Melvin Gordon's absence have on his draft slot? And can a former overall pros versus Joe's champ reclaim his title? Follow along with the live draft board tonight and listen to our analysis as we call the action from the 2019 FFPC pros versus Joe's. You will lose league number four to see who's going to win a 2020 FFPC main event team. We've got a great show for you. Dave Gerzak is here. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your high-stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Broadcast live and heard around the world, you are now listening to the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. It's the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com with your hosts, Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for football analysis from the best fantasy players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here are Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. With the master that's the leaf behind the video Thank you so much, Rob. Happy Sunday evening to you. Greetings and salutations to the rest of you, Balkaholics and Gerzakinetics. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, presented by MyFFPC.com. I am, of course, your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman, and my co host is the patron saint of fantasy football, the Dizzle, Dave Gerzak. Coming up on tonight's show, we have the fourth of six extra special bonus HSFFR episodes for you this season. It's the FFPC Pros versus Joes. You will lose league number four draft tonight. And we're going to be covering it for you for the next two hours. You can follow the draft board. I just posted the link not only to the FFPC, HSFFR, and my social media. It's also in the Blog Talk Radio chat room as well. And shout out to said chat room. Post your questions you might have in there. You can connect with us on Twitter. The show is at HSFFR, at Eric Balkman, at David Gerzak. Facebook.com slash HSFFR is where to reach us there. And if you want to give us a call and talk about the draft tonight, we always encourage that type of behavior. 347-426-3682. That's 347-GAME-OVER. You can also email the show at the inbox, highstakesfantasyfootball at gmail.com. If you have any questions for us, get them in now. Our producer and mutual friend Rob and our audio engineer and best friend Bryce is going to get to uh, those chat room questions, all the tweets, all the emails uh, throughout the show this evening, uh, whenever we can pipe in when there's a lull in the draft. And based on the action and the participants tonight, I don't know how many lulls there's going to be. As a reminder, MyFFPC.com is where to check out a ton of season-long drafting action. There's best balls, there's classics, there's dynasties, there's super flexes. There's Dynasty Superflex Best Balls and uh, more from $35 all the way up to $5,000. The FFPC does indeed have a league for every budget, myffpc.com. Dave, it is week two as we uh, kick off the second half of Pros vs. Joes for the season. Uh, training camp is well underway. I'm sure that will affect the ADP. Anything you're looking for tonight from all these? Uh, we have a former overall champ that we'll get to in a second. We have some really talented Joe's in the room tonight. It's it's going to be no holds barred. It's going to be uh, a lot of action, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we said you've had some training camp injuries, so I'm interested to see where a lot of these players are going. They're now moving down a little bit, like an AJ Green. I'd like to see where he's going to go. Um, is Todd Gurley going up because he actually practiced right. and things of that nature? 
Yes. Um, and we will uh, let, well, I'll, before we get to the first round of action, let me tell you who's actually drafting tonight. Uh, former guest of the show, uh, Brian Petrunik, is drafting number one tonight along with his son, David. They are, are hitting first tonight from the Athletic. It's Jake Seeley, who I believe won this competition uh, in 2016. I think he was the 2016 overall champ. I know he's won it before. I think that was his year. Another former guest of the show, Mike Edelman, picking third tonight. John Paulson from 4for4.com hitting cleanup. Apropos that four for four is in fourth. Uh, BitLab Mandel, a guy who has been on this show, has been on the road of his high stakes lowdown, uh, is hitting fifth tonight. Evan Silva from EstablishTheRun.com, another former guest of this show. He is in the sixth spot. Aaron and Andrew Scott, the FFPC Joes, are in the seven. Uh, Roto Ballers, Josh Hayes is going to be picking eighth tonight, followed by Jason Preem and Josh McIntyre's joint squad at nine. Matt Shaw, a former co-host of this show from Draft Sharks, uh, he is uh, in the 10th spot. The final FFPC Joe of the evening is Richie Nishura. He is in uh, spot 11. And then Michael Salfino from TheAthletic.com. Rounding things up at pick 12 tonight. We are already through the first round. A couple of interesting choices I want to get to here, Dave, as we uh, bring you all the action live pick by pick, except when we're recapping a round, which is what we're doing right now. Saquon Barkley to Team Petrunik here at the 101. No surprise there. Ezekiel Elliott. To Jake Seeley over Christian McCaffrey here, who goes to Mike Edelman at the 103. So Elliot Seeley, uh, who obviously knows what he's doing, uh, he's won this competition overall before. But what do you make of the Elliot over McCaffrey pick? I guess you can make a case for it. It's not something that you would do probably, but Elliot's going to get a lot of volume in Dallas, man. If he shows up, he's going to get a lot of volume in Dallas. <laughs> Well, but you think he's going to show up, though, I, right? I think there is, but I mean, it's not a non-zero. It's, it, there is some risk there, possibly. I'd, I would have a tough time passing on McCaffrey at one, much less two. So, you know, I would go McCaffrey if, for both those picks, but, you know, each, to each their own. To each their own, indeed. Uh, and Christian McCaffrey goes to Mike Edelman at the 103. And then normally what we've seen is is been these top four running backs. The squad of running backs, Dave, at the uh, at the top four picks this Very year. Nice. Yes, thank you. Uh, Alvin Kamara does not make it there. Uh, as Travis Kelsey goes to John Paulson from 4 for 4 at the 104, Kamara falls to Biplab Mandel, Jaman Jaman, uh, Team Jaman Jaman at 5 tonight. Alvin Kamara is his pick, so he's probably loving life there. David Johnson to Evan Silva at the 106, followed by the first receiver off the board. It's not Adams, it's not Hopkins, it's Odell Beckham to Aaron and Andrew Scott at the 107 tonight. Dave, if you were going to take a receiver first, I know you like Beckham, but would you be able to take him over Hopkins or even Adams? I mean, I would be able to. Um, but you don't know if you would. I probably would not. I would probably right. stick with Hopkins. I feel like that that's – even though he's the consensus number one, there's a reason for it, and I think that, that you know, that's good. He hasn't had – Beckham has had some injury issues, and uh, he is moving to a new team. So there's, there's some concern there a little bit, although he's supposedly been tearing it up. He had some really nice highlight catches already in the in practice. Oh, not not day one. The social media uproar of him dropping two passes oh on God, day really? one of Brown's camp. <laughs> oh my goodness, it was insane. I must, have, I must have been off Twitter that day. Yeah, you must have been, or at I least for, at least for the 15 minutes where it sent everybody into an outrage. Yeah. Uh, Le'Veon Bell right after that to uh, Josh Hayes from Roto Baller at the 108, followed by DeAndre Hopkins to Preem and McIntyre at the 108. Uh, 108, excuse me. Uh, a couple of running backs here. Uh, goes to uh, Matt Schauf. It's Joe Mixon from Cincinnati. James Conner at the 111, followed by the final pick of the first round tonight to Michael Salfino from The Athletic. It is one Devontae Adams. Has Joe Mixon for you, Dave, uh, you know, some of the injuries that we've seen in camp, the, the left tackle is out, the left guard is, is banged up now. Um, is that enough for, for you to bump Joe Mixon out of the first round for you? FFPC dra uh, owners are drafting him over the last three days in best balls at the 202. Um, so certainly, you know, if, if Matt Schauff is probably thinking like, well, I'm, there's a pretty good chance I'm not going to get him at the 203 here, so I better take him now. Would you still be taking Mixon in the first round? Um, I, probably, I probably would let him go. You know, I might take him in the second round. depends on where right. I'm at, but I don't think I would take him in the first. I'd probably be looking at receiver. Actually, I'm, I am, I'm liking Le'Veon Bell, Le'Veon Bell the more and the more I think about it. So mm -hmm. I probably would have Bell ahead of Mixon. Mr. Non-260-pound Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, and I, I really think the Jets' offense is going to be improved. And there's – it just – Cincinnati seems like they're a little bit um, – you know, they A little Bengalish. Yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> 
Yeah, they just, they'd it, be bangling, bungling yeah, the with, Bengals. With A.J. Green going down, too, now he's out four weeks uh, into the NFL season probably. I don't know when they're biased, but if, let's say it's week five. That could be all the way into week six. I don't right. know. Do you know when they're biased, Cincinnati? We I can know. look it up for you right now, Dave. But to talk a little bit more about A.J. Well, Green and, and the just, time that well he then, can... Yeah, I mean, it's, he's a star player. So, granted, they would probably run the offense more through Mixon, but uh, then you're looking at more stack boxes. Tyler Boyd is not going to command as much attention as A.J. Green since he plays the slot. So now you're going to be just – everything is going to get bunched up defensively, and I don't think that's good for Mixon. Uh, week nine is the Cincinnati Bengals right, so bye week talk. this year. Um, Tyler Boyd, I guess – you know, I, we'll get into more of this when, when he goes off the board. But um, Tyler Boyd, I guess, for where, where the Bengals were training in Dayton, he said the field conditions there are just terrible. Really? Yeah, and I think that that might have caused these torn ligaments, for, or at least he's pontificating that these – the field conditions may have indirectly caused the torn ligaments in AJ Green's left ankle. So well, that's uh, if that's I mean, if that's true, or if AJ Green thinks that, that's really a problem. Well, Tyler Boyd said that, not, no, not but I mean, AJ yeah, Green. But, yeah, but if he also agrees with him. Right? Yeah. Well, it, he, to my knowledge, uh, he has been the only guy who's said anything about it so far. But that doesn't mean he's the only guy who feels that way. If you had the opportunity in the first round, would you go James Conner over Matt Schauf? Or over Matt Schauf? Yeah, I'd take Conner over Matt Schauf in the first round. Would you take James Conner over Joe Mixon? I don't know, I'd probably take Mixon. You'd still, still take Mixon. All so, right. so the order in which they were drafted is kind of where I would. But again, I'd probably be looking at a receiver. I like Julio Jones. He's talking about 3,000 yards. How do you not want to draft Julio Jones? Well, Malcolm Salfino said, I am going to be the guy when we look back at this that says, I got Julio Jones in the second round. Exactly. Because he took Adams at the 112. <laughs> he kicks off the second round with uh, Julio at the 201, followed by Zach Ertz to Richie Nishura as the second tight end off the board tonight at the 202. Matt Schauff does indeed start running back, running back. Uh, some would say question mark, question mark, with Mixon and Melvin Gordon at the 203 tonight. Uh, Michael Thomas is the second receiver drafted in the second round for Preem and McIntyre. That's Jason Preem, Josh McIntyre, who starts off their draft. Hopkins and Michael Thomas. Boy, that what, what are we looking for targets there, Dave? Like 390, 400? Again, you're... We are assuming that everything in Michael Thomas right. reports. I mean, this is a little. I mean, I guess on a scale of zero to ten, how concerned are you? With zero as not at all, ten as in he's going to hold out. I don't know, five. Okay, I mean, wow. I, I for me, it's it's more like a two. Okay, yeah, I mean, is he, fine. is he is he holding? I mean, it, it's, he has not reported. Yeah, so I mean, that's what was the what was the language I heard? Somebody, I think Jerry Jones said Ezekiel Elliott isn't holding out. He's just late to camp. <laughs> I love that. That's, 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 that's like great. The, the great business speak. That's really uh, smart. That's, that's Jerry he, Jones. It's fine. That, that's how you reduce uh, conflict, right? He's, he's not. He's yeah. Not, why, why would you want to hang, exactly. explain, explain the situation? Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. He's, uh, he's not doing a bad job. He's just slower at his, at his uh, pace than, <laughs> than some other people. Uh, George Kittle at the uh, 205 tonight to Josh Hayes as the third tight end off the board. And. When's the last time you've seen this, Dave? As uh, Team Scott here, Aaron and Andrew, the FFPC Joe, they start off brown, brown. <laughs> Hello, Cleveland. Odell Beckham and Nick Chubb, the there real life teammates, are teammates on the Pros versus Joe squad in the league number four. You will lose for Aaron and Andrew Scott. You got to love that. And I don't think necessarily that those are either bad picks. You know what I mean? Like I, Beckham is a little bit high uh, as far as his ADP goes, but again, it's the first round. If you want your guy, and he's not going to be there when it comes back around, his average. Uh, draft position is 203. That makes sense there, and that's right around where Chubb's been going. In fact, you could honestly say that there might be some value there with Nick Chubb at the 206 tonight. Moving on after that, Evan Silva uh, gets Tyreek Hill off the board at the 207 tonight. Uh, feels, you know, I know everything we've gone through with him in the offseason. Does 207 seem late for Tyreek Hill, knowing what we know now? It kind of seems about right to me. Okay. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe a, a tinge late. And, I, and the reason I say that is because of, because of the Michael Thomas situation, uh, because of the Melvin Gordon situation. To me, I would be drafting Tyreek Hill over those players. I would have also taken Tyreek Hill over Chubb personally just because I, I'm concerned about Chubb's pass catching. And I probably looked at Dalvin Cook too ahead of Chubb, but that's just, again, just my, my right. choice. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so I mean, maybe a, a few picks, but that's not many, not many. You know what else I just found out tonight um, when I was reading some stuff before the show? Um, Kareem Hunt can't return until week 10. Is that accurate because of the bye week? Oh, uh, that could be. I mean, it has to be. It's eight game weeks, I guess. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. So then sure. if they have the bye, wow, that's that to me. I mean, we'll get into it more when Kareem Hunt gets drafted tonight. But that is. When you that, think about it, too, then, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that you're right in that week 17 doesn't count for fantasy. So effectively, he is only going to have a seven week fantasy season. And you could make the case he's only going to have a two week FFPC regular season. 
Well, that is the case you would be making. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm glad we're on the same page on this. <laughs> Juju Smith Schuster right after Tyree Kill to uh, Bip Lab Mandel. Just curiously, Dave, um, if you had the opportunity, let's say you, you got a running back in the first round like Silva or Mandel did here with uh, Johnson and Kamara respectively, and you were deciding between Hill and Smith Schuster, two guys that I know you both have an affinity or you have affinity for both of these guys, which one do you like better for uh, redraft? Don't ask me that question. I don't. I, I can't because you can't. It's like picking I, your I, favorite I, child. Yeah, I can't. I can't choose. Okay. Right? I, you know, it's like, yeah, I have to flip a coin. They're, they're close for different reasons. I love both of them. So faced with that choice in the second round, Hiller Smith-Schuster, you would not make a decision. You would just, you know what, give me Jamon Moore. <laughs> or Yaman Moore. Is that what we're calling yeah, him now? Yeah. I mean, we officially Yaman Moore on this, on this sure, podcast? Sure, sure. Okay. I mean, Juju has some uncertainty in that he's never been the lead receiver on the team, but he's, one of, he's probably like one of the most productive young receivers in the history of, of the game, really. He's, it's been crazy how well he's done. Did, but I think he'll, he'll be probably plenty fine. Did you see who is running as the two for Pittsburgh? Uh, next, Moncrief? It is Monty Doncrief yeah. who is running as the number two there. You know what that, to me, suggests? A six, what is, it, what, is this a sixth year or fifth? Uh, I don't even know. I can look it's it up. A sixth year breakout? It's a sixth year breakout. That, okay, year breakout? You, you, could be, you could be right about that, but you know what this suggests to me? Um, that you just going to go out of target? Uh, yes, and that I should not be wanting to be in business with Dante Moncrief, James Washington, or Deontay Johnson this year. Well, I, th- I think that Deontay Johnson, it sounds like to me, just in the get in the scuttle, but I've heard is definitely not in that contention to be the number two. But James Washington still is battling with Moncrief, from what I've heard. I would personally, just because of Moncrief's history, right. and that supposedly Washington's gotten in better shape, I'd be more apt to bet on Washington. <laughs> Um, just because like, I, I just, I can't, I can't buy Moncrief. I just can't. I mean, people, other people can, that's fine. Dave, a uh, question from the chat room. Uh, Josh Mack 22 wants to know, is Juju Smith-Schuster considered a dark throw? <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> is he a second round dark throw tonight? Yeah. That's what we're trying to, to ascertain here. Uh, Damian Williams goes off the board to, uh, John Paulson at the, uh, 209, followed by Dalvin Cook to Mike Edelman. And she starts off running back, running back. And Antonio Brown, the penultimate pick of the second round to Jake Seeley. And then uh, Todd Gurley falling all, 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 all the way to the 212 tonight to Team Petrunik. Let's go to the phone lines. We're going to hit up the 616 here and find out what's on the mind of you as you are on the air with Dave and Balky. To whom are we, are we speaking? Hey, Bill from Grand Rapids. Bill from Grand Rapids, what's on your mind tonight, man? Oh, man, I just wanted to say, you guys do a good job at this. I mean, it's just fun just listening to you guys talk and watching the Trolls versus Joes here on the Slog Talk Radio. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. Well, Bill, thank you so much for the kind words. We certainly appreciate that. We're loving uh, that you're loving listening to this. We are through. uh, Now, we haven't covered the third round yet, but as you look uh, at the first two rounds here tonight uh, on the streaming draft board, on, on the pick-by-pick analysis that we've given. Are there any picks that have stood out to you? Any surprises? Anything that you think might dictate um, uh, a team going a certain direction from here on out based on how their first two selections have gone? Um, I thought maybe Odell went a little early, but, I mean, so far I, I think it's all really close. I think it's more about guys that, you don't like, you know, and I feel like I like almost all these players in the first three rounds. I think they're all pretty good. It's kind of when it gets to the more like the fourth round and fifth round where I start going, ooh, you know, and more questions in the later rounds than there is in the early rounds myself. Well, I think, I, and, and I, it, all good points there, and I, I think that some people would, would pose that maybe Melvin Gordon for Matt Schauf at DraftSharks.com, uh, taking him at the 203 when it, you know, I, I, I've heard the phrase dug in so much with Melvin Gordon's right. attitude to this, to this Chargers holdout. Would you be willing to take Melvin Gordon that early in the second round? Because for me personally, I don't think I could do it. You know, I think I could. I think what they say they were close to like only two point five million dollars away from signing them, and I just think uh, per year though. I think that, that was an average annual value. So to, to, so to me, that you're talking about like like what fifteen million in cash then, roughly. Lots of billions out there. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, you're right. But I just kind of feel you'd be on board like at Melvin geez. Gordon there. I think so. Yeah. I, right now, I, I, I. Yeah, I, right now I've been in draft calculators taking him right around there, and I don't mind him. I think I would take him before, you know, just because I feel like he's going to be on the field. And so I think by week one he's going to be there. And so who, would I rather have him over like Damian Williams and Dalvin Cook and Joe Nixon? I, I would. And so at the two, 
203, maybe even the, you know, the 11, 6, 12, 6. I'm, I'm still willing to take him there. Um, but I, uh, there's one guy, you know, after doing the tape that I just will not draft, and I think he's going way too early, is um, Galladay for the Lions. Is When I do the tape on Galladay, he's never open. <laughs> he, he's always that is a problem. Off. So to me, I'm, um, you know, I'm a I'm a Lions fan, and I always will be. It's just how we are. But when I watch the games, I'm like, why is Stafford holding on to the ball too long? And then I I watch these guys run when I'm doing the tape, you know, after the week's over, and I'm like, well, Galladay wasn't open, and so having your number one wide receiver never be open is frustrating. He does, you know, make these marvelous catches, but, you know, how many marvelous catches can you catch in a year, you know? So yeah, I'm thinking yeah. like 55 to 60 balls. But uh, what do you guys think about um, Mark Ingram? How do you, how many runs do you think he's going to have this year? And uh, Hey, this is my, uh, I'm run, entering three teams in the FFPC, and I'm just excited. But my question is for you, is, uh, what do you guys think about how many runs Mark Ingram is going to get this year? Well, Bill, that that's an excellent question, and we we certainly thank you for the phone call. We're gonna we're gonna answer that right now. As far as Mark Ingram goes, Dave, this is a guy that you know it's weird. I've never been on him in the past so much, but this year I, I can I can kind of get on board. You know, he's going to a run dominant offense in Baltimore. Uh, you know, where where um, he he might be the second best runner on the team next to Lamar Jackson, uh, and he's not going terribly early. You know, we're through four rounds tonight, and and he's still on the board for all these uh, pros and Joes. Uh, I, you know, I don't, you know, it's not like he's going to be catching 60, 70 balls this year uh, or whatever, or anything like that. But Mark Ingram, if, if, if you're getting him as your second running back, I can definitely get on board with that because I, I probably stacked my receiver position or maybe got an early tight end. I like Mark Ingram this year. And, and I can tell you as far as uh, the FFPC best ballers go, they've been drafting him on average at the 412 over the last three days. Uh, so, you know, it, to me, that seems like a good value. So Mark Ingram, you know, what's funny about him is people think that he's kind of this plotter, but keep in mind, I mean, in 2015, he actually had uh, 60 catches. Uh, and I'm sorry, 60, he had 50, 60 targets, 50 catches. 2016, he had 46 catches. In 2017, he had 58 catches. That's a lot of receptions. Uh, he's a good pass catching back. I think he's going to be the three down back there, and I do think he's a value, actually, of where he's being selected in most drafts right now. And for, for me, that to, that suggests is, you know, because I, I think there's a certain wave of Justice Hill truthers out there that would say, like, hey, this is the guy you want for that pass-catching role on third downs. He's, he's faster than all get-out. But for you, you're kind of poo-pooing that a little bit, that Ingram could be one of those rare fourth-round three-down running backs this year. I mean, it's totally possible. Again, I, I have to look at uh, – yeah, Justice Hill, he had uh, – 31 catches in 2017 at Oklahoma State, and last year he had 13 catches for 68 yards and no touchdowns. So, I mean, that's not really very good. No. It, you know, it, in the it, you know the Big 12, Oklahoma State, you should expect more than that. Uh, let's move on and get into the third round here as we are falling behind on uh, all this great analysis that uh, you normally are used to. Not on this program, obviously. You just get uh, below average analysis here. But the 301 is Mike Evans to Team Petrunic here as their number one receiver. Josh Jacobs as uh, Jake Seeley goes Raider, Raider. Antonio Brown in the second. Josh Jacobs in the third. Uh, Jacobs is the 302 tonight. Mike Edelman starts off his draft with three straight running backs. It's McCaffrey, it's Dalvin Cook, and now Carrion Johnson for Bill from Grand Rapids. Rapids' favorite team, the Detroit Lions. Aaron Jones off the board to John Paulson is his number two running back. T.Y. Hilton to uh, Bitblad Mandel. Dave, I think, you know, it's a running joke on this show. That is as deep to the middle as I've ever seen T.Y. Hill drafted in any FFPC league. Normally goes on the turn, whether it's the 2-3 or, you know, the... Uh, you know, the two, three for team one or, or the, 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 the one, two for, for team 12. Uh, this is not normal for T.Y. Hilton to be going off the board at the 305 tonight, but that's where he is. Devontae Freeman, Florida State. Um, I don't want to call him an alumnus because I, I think he might have left early, but Devontae Freeman to Evan Silva here at the 306, followed by Marlon Mack, the maybe bell cow for the Indianapolis Colts to team Scott at the uh, 307 tonight. First quarterback comes off the board to uh, Josh Hayes from rotoballer.com. He takes Patrick Mahomes, a true rainbow start for him. We'll get to that in the fourth round. But Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback's 
have been cracked at the 308, thanks to Josh Hayes. Adam Thielen, the third straight receiver drafted by Jason Preem and Josh McIntyre, as he is uh, going to be joining DeAndre Hopkins and Michael Thomas out wide for Team Preem McIntyre here in this league. Leonard Fournette, uh, the second team to go with three straight running backs to kick things off. It's Matt Schauff going with Leonard Fournette, has his RB3 next to Mixon and Melvin Gordon. Uh, last two picks of the third round, Keenan Allen is the number one receiver to Richie Nishura, and then Amari Cooper, the 312 pick tonight, is Michael Salfino, uh, his number three receiver, Devontae Adams, Julio Jones, and Amari Cooper. I want to catch us up here a little bit, uh, so I'm going to get through the fourth round, and the interesting thing about this is we've had one team go with four straight receivers to kick things off, and it is the Athletics' Michael Salfino as he takes Stephon Diggs as his number four receiver. Devontae Adams, Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, and Stephon Diggs, congratulations. You have the best receivers in this league. Will it be enough to win? No, well, we're going to find that out over the course of the next 24 rounds. Julian Edelman is the number two receiver for Richie Nishura at the 402 tonight. Pair of tight ends go off the board right after that with some upside. It's Evan Engram to Matt Chow, followed by O.J. Howard to Preeman McIntyre here at the 404. I talked about the rainbow start for Josh Hayes. It is a true one tonight as he goes running back, tight end, quarterback, receiver here. Uh, the receiver in question is Brandon Cooks, and he is the 405 pick, the number one receiver for Josh Hayes. Team Scott started off with Odell Beckham in the first round. They have gone with three straight running backs after that. Chubb, Mack, and now Philip Lindsay, the undrafted Wunderkind from Denver last year. Philip Lindsay is the 406 pick. Evan Silva goes with Derrick Henry, who is apparently in a walking boot. Uh, I don't know if everybody caught that. I certainly missed it. Found out a little bit before the show started. But Derrick Henry is his number three running back, is what Silva goes with here in the fourth. David Montgomery, the rookie out of Iowa State. The Cyclone goes to Bip Lab Mandel as his number two running back. We've had one team double up with tight ends, and it is John Paulson from 4for4.com. He took Travis Kelsey at the 104. He's taking Hunter Henry at the 409 tonight. DJ Moore, the first receiver drafted by Mike Edelman. Hey, I've done that this year already. DJ Moore to Mike Edelman at the 410, followed by Kenny Galladay, who Bill in Grand Rapids does not like this year. He says he's never open. And honestly, you know, we laughed when Bill said that, but I've heard that from other people before, people who have looked at tape and watched Lions games and said that, yeah, this guy is, is huge. He has good hands get open all that much, which may not be a big deal when you're as big as he is, but whether he returns fourth round fantasy value for Jake Seeley, that remains to be seen. Obviously Seeley likes that pick there, the penultimate pick of the fourth round. And then Robert Woods off the board at the 412 to Brian and David Petrunik. He is their number two receiver uh, from the Rams as uh, Robert Woods actually just agreed to a, it was a, it was a raise actually. It wasn't a contract restructure. He is going to be paid more uh, over the course of the next two or three years. Uh, I don't know if that was a case of, of the Rams wanting to make sure that he's happy going forward uh, in a Rams uniform, catching balls from Jared Goff. They certainly didn't need to do it, but they took advantage of the opportunity to do so, and he is higher paid now for the Rams. Congratulations to Robert Woods, who was also the final pick of the fourth round tonight here in the FFPC. Pros versus Joes, league number four, you will lose. I actually, Dave, I don't know if you... Uh, what you were doing today, I know you're very busy with, with a lot of FFPC work, but I was, um, I was doing some work myself, and you know a movie I happened to catch the end of? Rocky IV. I don't know what channel it was on, but, uh, you know, that's one of the ultimate, oh, man, I, I, this speech is so cheesy, but it always gets me pumped up every time I see it, right, at, right after he beats Drago, <laughs> spoiler alert, in Rocky IV, and he's like, yeah, if I could change, and you could change, and then everybody goes crazy, he's like, we all change. You know, they should have Rocky in like the halls of Congress with the Republicans and Democrats and try to oh, get them together. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Who would send them there? Who would he be representative of? I guess just us, right? The yeah, American Amer people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Any picks stand out to you here in the fourth round? What do you? I, I guess we'll, we'll talk about John Paulson here. This is, you know, we talk about I guess we, what we've talked about on this program a lot is the dangers of going quarterback tight end, you know, early when you hit both those positions early. What about hitting the tight end position twice early on here as Paulson gets Kelsey at 104 and then a potential breakout candidate in Hunter Henry here at the 409? Uh, you know, I'm sure it can work. And uh, because, you know, Henry's your flex and then he's your second tight end and then you weaken everybody else. So, I mean, there's strategically it makes some sense. Uh, then your, your receivers are just definitely going to be weaker. And uh, but if Paul if Paulson's strategy is to just have his receivers be the worst part of his team, which is looking like that's kind of where he's going, 
and try and just start two, you know, two most of the time and sometimes three, I can see it work. I don't, I don't know that it's an optimal strategy if you're, if you were looking at, you know, team construction wise, I'm guessing it's probably not. Um, but I, I know, you know, taking a tight end really is good. I, again, I just don't know about the second one. If Henry, you know, if Henry crushes it though, if he gets all those targets, uh, you know, it's going to be, he's going to be hard pressed to do poorly. Overall. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you pick the right players, even if your you know, team construction isn't optimal, you're going to do well. What do you make of OJ Howard here at the 404? And, and before you answer that question, let's just talk about what he is. He is a former first round pick, a pedigree guy from one of the best college football programs in the country. And he is going into a, a Bruce Arians offense that a loves to bomb the ball, loves to pass the ball, but B doesn't necessarily the target the tight end all that much, uh, at least historically. Now, you can make the case that Howard is one of, if not the best tight end that Bruce Arians has ever coached, but I, I guess I'm still a little bit nervous about his usage for 2019. It, 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 are, are my concerns founded, or am I crazy? Or am I something in the middle? <laughs> I guess, well, I mean, we really will find out. I, I'm not really sure, to be honest. And I, I, I'm probably kind of on the... I would take Howard if he becomes a value. I don't think I would necessarily target him. Um, I'm concerned. I, would, I mean, I actually feel more comfortable taking Hunter Henry coming off the injury. And with Ingram, I would feel more comfortable with him just because there's so many people that are hurt on that team right now. Um, that team, Preem and McIntyre, uh, did not take a running back in the first four rounds. Uh, neither did Michael Salfino uh, from The Athletic. What do you um, – I don't know if you have a personal philosophy on this. It's weird that we're in the fourth episode of Pros vs. Joe's this year, and I haven't asked you this yet. But what's your personal philosophy on going zero RB in a best ball format? Do you, is that something that you would go to battle with? Is it something you try to avoid? Is it something you embrace? Uh, how do you handle that, uh, the possibility of skipping over some of the elite running backs to load up at receiver and tight end in this format? Yeah, to me personally, it's kind of tough to do unless I have a late pick like 10, 11, 12. And then I could get on board Salfino strategy through the first four rounds. I'm not sure if I could go with a fifth or wide receiver. Woo, that is spicy. We're going to get to that. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, it, it, it can work. And the thing is, I'm, I'm a big believer in making sure your flex is really, really strong and also a big believer in having good receivers. So, I, But generally speaking, I would prefer to go more of a one running back and then pound round receiver strategy. But, you know, it does change. depends on who's available, who I like. And, uh, you know, the receivers he grabbed, I think all, all four of them were excellent picks at those spots. Henry Mudo actually pointing out in the chat room, look, you only have to start two running backs in this format. Ryan Poole actually saying that uh, they're going to line up O.J. Howard as a receiver plenty in Tampa Bay this year. Uh, by I the way, the question about that, too, is it's like, okay, how is, how is Godwin going get, to get 100 catches? Did you and see, how is Mike Evans going to get his catches? Did you see what Arian said about Godwin a couple of days ago? No. I think it was. He says I didn't hear it either. Okay. Go ahead. You, you know, I'm, I'm rolling here. You don't, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Don't, yes. Am I ruining your uh, my mojo? Whatever? You took my mojo, baby. <laughs> um, no, uh, you, uh, you have Bruce Arians talking about Godwin saying he's never going to leave the field. Like he's going to be out there the whole time. Well, good. Well, which is great for, for, for Godwin. Godwin. Yeah, exactly. Or, I mean, if he can take the, the heat, as it were, Dave. Yeah. All right, let's move on here and assess this uh, fifth round. And uh, I want to lead things off at the 501 which uh, Henry Mudo said, uh, wow, to Vance McDonald at the 501, as he is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, seventh tight end off the board tonight at the 501 to Team Petrunic. The aforementioned Chris Godwin is the number three receiver for Jake Seeley over at the Athletic. Calvin Ridley, the number two receiver on his team. He's the number two receiver for Mike Edelman tonight, too. James White is the third running back drafted by John Paulson here at the 504, followed by Mark Ingram, who had a nice little chat about, to Bip Lab Mandel. That's the 505 pick tonight, followed by Tyler Lock. Uh, at the 506, and then a player that we were very interested to see where he would slip tonight, given that it sounds like he will not be ready in time for week one, and that is the Bengals receiver, A.J. Green. Goes off the board tonight at 507 as the number two receiver drafted by Team Scott, Aaron and Andrew here. Uh, tonight, the FFPC Joes, they take A.J. Green at the 507. Let's get a couple of running backs off the board right after that. It's Sony Michelle, the number two for Josh Hayes from Roto Baller. And Tariq Cohen is the first running back drafted by Preeman McIntyre here at the 509. Uh, we'll finish off round five with a trio of receivers, Alshon Jeffrey, Cooper Cup, and then A.J. Green's real-life teammate, 
Tyler Boyd. Uh, that is your uh, first five rounds tonight, and I do want to bring this to your attention. If this is the first time you are listening to the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, we air year-round right here at blogtalkradio.com slash HSFF Friday nights. 10, 9 Central, you can hear from Dave and I each and every Friday night, along with a, uh, an accomplished FFPC high stakes uh, fantasy football player as well. We always have one of those on uh, every single week. On-demand streaming, always available via Apple Podcasts, hsffhour.com, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Podbean Spreaker, and Overcast as well. Getting back to the fifth round here tonight, Dave, what stands out for you? Um, I guess let's, let's sort of look at what Preem and McIntyre did here. Um, you load up with Hopkins, Michael Thomas, Thielen, and then O.J. Howard at tight end. At what cost? Tariq Cohen's your number one running back. How concerned are you with that, knowing that uh, David Montgomery's been getting a lot of pub in the preseason here for the Bears? Well, I mean, you know, if, if, that's, the, if that's the way you're going to roll with building your team, that's the type of player you're going to get. I think Cohen's still going to have a, a plenty, of a good, plenty of good role, and I think he'll have a good season. I think he'll be fine. Um, the, the scuttlebutt um, in the chat room, uh, Shane Hallam, piping in talking about Mike Edelman's team who actually was on this show uh, a couple of weeks ago and yep. he said if, if if he can find a tight end they're going to be tough to beat and we're we'll, we'll get into it in a second but he's made his seventh round pick still no tight end uh, we'll see how that turns out here and you can I, mean, I think in the, in this in a best ball format Dave you can really load up um, you can attack the tight end position with multiple players if, if you want to avoid it in the first seven rounds it could work it's just increasingly more difficult each and every round you wait and you avoid on tight, you know, avoid the tight end position. It gets tougher and tougher to assemble a core there that can really help you out week to week. Well, and the other thing is in best ball formats, usually FFPC around. I'm trying to think of what round it is, but I think it's around, I think nine, uh, maybe around around ten or eleven actually. That's where everyone starts taking out their second tight ends. So yeah. He's going to have to pop off two tight ends. Otherwise, he's you know you don't you don't you really don't want to be left in the woods with you know you know Tyler Eifert and Witten and. You know, Everett. Josh Josh Oliver, yeah. Dawson Knox, Gerald Everett, Gerald kind of Everett. Like oh that. yeah, Gerald Everett. That's yeah, so, a, I mean, that, those, that's the thing is, I mean, granted, Darren they're, Waller, they're fourth guys. I mean, Darren <laughs> Waller could actually, I mean, he's probably the better one, better right. one of those yeah. in that yeah. group. But you really don't want, you want those guys to be like your third tight end or fourth, not your two. Well, he will have an opportunity to pick here in the eighth round. We'll see what he does uh, at tight end. Let's move on here, Dave, and, and uh, tell everybody what happened in the sixth round. Uh, Michael Salfino, after starting off with one, two, three, four. Five straight receivers. Count them five. Devontae Adams, Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, Stephon Diggs, Tyler Boyd. He finally gets his first running back off the board tonight. It is Chris Carson here at the 601. Kenyon Drake uh, at the 602. And I do want to pause and talk about this situation a little bit because Kalen Balaj has, has been running with the ones ahead of Kenyon Drake at Dolphins training camp. And I think the um, feedback that we've gotten in these drafts since that has taken place is that Fantasy owners are like, that's okay. That's just going to drive down Drake's price. I still want to be in business with him. I still want him as the number one running back for the Dolphins. They don't seem all that concerned about Kalen Balazs really being the, the true starter. How do you assess that situation where we know that what, what Drake is, we know who Balazs is, and yet Balazs is running ahead of Kenyon Drake with, by the way, a new coaching staff in Miami this year. If you were drafting – how would you sort of handle that that uh, that Dolphins running back situation? Would you be targeting one over, over the other or avoiding one or the other? You know, you you went into that whole super long question. I was trying to vamp for time. Well, I, I wasn't sure if you were ready to answer it. I have no idea. I have not. I've, <laughs> so I didn't vamp long enough. Well, I didn't. I really, you know, I, I you, you went into this super long question. I mean, I, I, right. I, this isn't a presidential debate. I didn't do the research on Belichick. I'm sorry, my I, time's up. And I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not drafting right now. I probably should know this. But I mean, it's just—it's a situation that just came up, and I haven't read any news articles on it at all. So I really, to give an answer, would be me just bullshitting. Okay. So well, I'm, that's I'm fine. That. That's what I do on this show all the time. Well, I do it most of the time, but I actually usually have some some of an opinion. That's fine. Um, if you, I, if I had to guess, I would say Drake is still the player to own. I'd probably still be drafting him, but at a discount. Well, a lot of FFPC players that have won a lot of money over the last couple of years seem to have that same take uh, as as far as that goes. Sammy Watkins. Uh, to Matt Schauf here at the uh, 603, Dave. You look at his top two receivers. Now, granted, he did wait until the fifth round of draft run. He has Alshon Jeffrey and Sammy Watkins. What's the over-under on starts between those two receivers this year? <laughs> what would you set it at? If I was to say, hey, I'm going to give you Jeffrey, I'm going to give you Watkins, they're each going to be scheduled for 16 games this year, what would you set the over-under at for total starts between those two players? Honest question. Okay, honest question. Uh, 
If I was a bet, if I, so if I was the bookmaker and I had to set this, and people, people well, can I'm bet gonna write a number down right here, and, and people can bet it. You're probably well. I would say so. There's 32 games. Yep. Between the two of them. Um. 24 and a half. Oh, dude, look what I wrote. 23. I wrote 23. You said 24 and a half. We are of one mind on that one. No question. Uh, so I guess I'm taking the under at that. So are, um, we, are, we, are we putting five on it? No, because we're what? talking. Well, I mean, do you really want to? Well, I, 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 I said yeah, No, that's fine. I, I handicapped a little bit right. of numbers. All right. So I will take. This is such a. We've never made a wager like this. So here, <laughs> here's what it is. So I am taking under 20. What was it? 24 and a half? Is yeah, that what you said? Okay. So under 24 and a half combined starts. God, I can't believe Rob has to research this. <laughs> um, for Eagles wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey and Chiefs wide receiver Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins. I have five, Dave, on that total being less than 24 and a half this year. Right. I, I have five on it. I got five on it going over. And the button's broke. Hold on. <laughs> I got five on you know, Perfect. It's kind of like Thank you, you know, like little kids when you when you uh, when you hit, tell them to split up a cookie. You know, you give one kid the cookie and you tell them to cut it. You know, break it in half. Oh yeah, and then the other guy the gets pick. the pick. Yeah, yeah. So that's what this felt like. Right. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Uh, Rashad Penny off the board in the same round as Chris Carson. Three picks later, as Penny goes to Preeman McIntyre at the 604. Austin Eckler, number three running back, drafted by Josh Hayes tonight. He did not draft Melvin Gordon earlier. Matt Schauff had the opportunity to get Eckler, chose to go with Sammy Watt instead. A couple of tight ends off the board. Jared Cook, Matt Schauff is going to fricassee me. I feel like all I've been doing is riffing on his team, and I don't necessarily dislike it. Jared Cook and David Njoku. Cook to Team Scott and Njoku to Team Silva. Uh, Tevin Coleman, the number four running back. I believe that is the first team with four running backs off the board. That is Biplab Mandel, who is... Also drafting a dynasty rookie draft at the same time tonight, Dave. The prolific Biplab Mendel, the notorious BIP, the house of cards himself, Tevin Coleman, goes off the board as his number four running back at the 608 tonight. A couple of receivers here for you. Allen Robinson is the number one receiver for John Paulson after he hit tight end and running back hard. Uh, Mike Williams, the number three receiver drafted by Mike Edelman, and then we're going to we're going to cap off sixth round here. Darius Geis is the third running back chosen by Jake Seeley from the Athletic, and then Robbie Anderson completing round six tonight. Robbie Anderson, the Jets' uh, number one receiver, uh, goes to Team Petrunic as their number three receiver. Does Darius Geis feel early at, at, at the 6'11"? I'm, I'm looking this up right now as far as where he's been going over the last three days. 6'10", so I guess that's right. That's he's dialed, Jake Seeley's dialed in, no surprise there. Um, he's dialed in, and, and Darius Geis go off, goes off the board at the uh, end of the sixth round. Um, I look at that Redskins running back situation. I know we talked a little bit about AP last week, but Geis is younger. Um, the fact that he had this setback, Dave, from, from his knee surgery and he's already practicing again, I don't want to say I'm liking him more because I, I still don't think I'd invest a late six-round pick into him, especially considering that Trent Williams is, doesn't want to have anything to do with the Redskins anymore. And they've been – I think Eric Flowers has been getting training camp snaps there at left tackle. Woof. Um, it's hard for me to fall in love with anybody in the Redskins ground game unless you're investing – in a quasi-cyborg who is 75% robot, 25% human, and that is Adrian Peterson. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of guys for redraft purposes because, well, first of all, the Redskins' offense is probably not going to be very good. Their quarterback play is questionable. Uh, guys still has to deal with Adrian Peterson. Peterson is not just going to give up the starting job, so to speak. Now, he, they can go ahead and give guys and, and, and give him the carries, but I just don't think – I think Peterson still, at this even at this age, commands some carries – and then they both have to deal with Chris Thompson as the third yeah. down back because neither one of them catch passes. So what, where's the upside? I know that he was a super highly touted player that fell in the draft. Right. I mean, all these dynasty people still loved him. I'm still just not quite getting it. it Are the right. dynasty people still loving him, though, because they're the ones who took him at the 102 and, you know, have um, the endowment effect? With, Cognitive with guys, dissonance. Cognitive or, dissonance. Yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, that, yeah, they don't want to trade him or anything like that, and that, that's fine. You know who else you didn't mention in that Redskins ground game? The fourth-round pick, another guy who's had a lot of injuries his senior year, a guy of college and a guy that a lot of people were saying that could have been the 102 pick um, next to Saquon Barkley if he would have come out early. He chose to stay his oh, yeah, final year at Stanford, got hurt, 
and fell to the fourth round in the NFL draft, Bryce Love. Is he on the pup list right now? I mean, I thought he was going to be, like, active pupped or pupped. Oh, he could he was, be active pupped. I, I don't know. I he was know. still, like, not even close to there yet, but I might be wrong. Yikes. Okay. So, they, well, then forget. I mean, forget I it. Again, I haven't been really paying much attention to Bryce Love. No, that's fine. You're a busy guy. He's on the NFI list as of four days ago. Okay. Fair enough. Let's move on to the seventh round of action here, Dave. Uh, Latavius Murray. Um, I think – I think I can call him my boy, given how I've defended him on this program <laughs> over the last month or so. Um, although he is, uh, he's falling out. You know, Theo Riddick got cut by the Lions a couple of days ago, and he was apparently, yeah, this is weird, ESPN's Rob Domofsky, the Packers reporter, was the first to report that Theo Riddick was going to be working out or interviewing with the Saints down in New Orleans. Sure, yeah. I don't know how that works, but the Packers guy is getting the scoop on this. Yeah, maybe you have some friends. But Riddick is going to be going down to New Orleans. Who knows if he gets signed there? But I, I'm just I'm waning a little bit on Latavius Murray. I mean, the fact that you can still get him in the seventh round, I'm on board for that. But it's, it's I don't know. Like When you brought up the how many passes or, or how few of passes, I should say, he's caught over the course of his career – I don't know if I'm, I'm still on board with him as much as I used to be, but he should be a force inside the two, inside the three, inside the five-yard line yeah, for I mean, New Orleans. I think so, too. I mean, if he plays the Ingram role, Ingram was fantastic in, you know, 15, 16, 17. Yeah. I think, you know, I think he'll be, I think he'll be pretty good. I don't think that even if Riddick signs, I think that, I mean, it's something, but, you know, Riddick is not, he's, I don't know, he's, I, think well, he's Riddick, a, I think he's a little bit overrated. Riddick, I mean, if he's getting cut already in camp, right. it's like, come on. And Riddick could be the type of guy that maybe he spells Alvin Kamara on third down every so often, but not, not that often, um, inside the 20s. But if it's third down and you want to give Kamara a spell, are you bringing in Theo Riddick or are you bringing in Latavius Murray? And yeah. to me, it's more Murray. The first and goal to two-yard line, you're not bringing in Riddick no, to, to replace no, Murray. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, Will Fuller at the 702 tonight is the number four receiver for Jake Seeley. Christian Kirk's the number four receiver for Mike Edelman here uh, from the Arizona Cardinals. Jarvis Landry off the board at the 704 to John Paulson. Do you think Jar- Jarvis Landry's been going late in drafts? Because you look at, you know, the... I know Jake Rickroad thinks so. <laughs> you look at uh, what the Browns have cooking in Cleveland this year and, and this Uber, you know, the greatest show on turf part two or whatever it is with Beckham and Njoku and Landry and Chubb and Mayfield and everybody. Um, Jarvis Landry, on average, going at the 6.07 in drafts, and he goes at the 7.04 tonight. Now, the mouse to feed um, argument will probably go into this, but, man, if they can get Jarvis Landry in the seventh round, I'm, I'd, I'd stand in line all week for that. I would love to have him in the seventh round as my fourth uh, wide receiver. Yeah, absolutely. Not as my number two wide receiver, which is – that's What John Paulson did. But John, he paper. loaded up on running backs and tight ends, so now he's got to kind of figure it out. Fair enough. But, I, yeah, I, I think – and the reason I mentioned Jake Rickrode is he, his argument is that – At Clutch re- Fantasy on Twitter, great follow, former guest of the show. I forgot what I was I just wanted to know. I nothing else. No, no, no. You said – you were talking about the reason <laughs> you bring remember up what I was with, with Rick Rode. Yeah, he just – he always says the top 24 receivers tend to stay top 24 receivers – Landry is, is a former top 24 receiver when he was with Miami, and that uh, he's got the, he definitely has the skill set with Mayfield playing a full season. I think that that it is, and it actually happens pretty frequently, more often than people think that you have two top 24 receivers from the same team. Right. So if this our offense is sparkling, if, if it's crushing it, uh, Beckham and Landry, I think I think they both have a really good shot to be top 24. Who's the odd man out? In, okay, so okay, let's break, let's. No talk. one. No, 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 no. Hold on. Oh, just let me set. Yards. Okay, let me set this up first. So I can't remember who it was. It was within the last two years, and I can't remember what team it was. Um, and I'm going to bring this up from, like, whatever it was eight years ago or whatever. When the Patriots offense, you had Wes Welker, Aaron Hernandez, Brandon Lloyd, and Rob Gronkowski. Those four guys were all being drafted super high. And you said, on, on these airwaves, Dave, there is no way that all four of those guys return value of where they're going mm-hmm. in drafts. One right. of those guys is going to be a bust. That's at, just at the way that right. – right. yeah. And three of them did return value. Right. One did not, and that was Brandon Lloyd. And we, we I mean, it wasn't that hard, but we easily, I thought. Well, Brandon opinion, Lloyd was coming off a big season, and he right. was like the, he was the, he's, he was the field stretcher. He's, he, you know, Dante Bondry watches videos of Brandon Lloyd's great season and prays that that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly, before. yes. This, so, is, this is what you're praying those, for. Sending out those Brandon Lloyd prayers tonight. That's so true. So was there another team that we made this inference Recently, it happened, it happened I feel like there often, was, actually. and I can't remember what team we talked about. Well, I think too when you look at when you look at receivers and when they get drafted, uh, you know, sometimes, for example, uh, you know, Minnesota, you have Stephon Diggs and you have Thielen both going like the, in the late third round, sure. and you have Kirk Cousins going when like the 17th or 18th, super late. And you know, Rudolph gets catches and so forth. So almost got 70 last year. I mean, the, kind of the question is, you know, is, is Cousins going a little bit too late or or not? You know, or 
for example, where the receiver is going too early. Right, right. Yeah. And I mean, for Tampa Bay is a, is good. You have Evans, you have Godwin, and you have OJ Howard. They're all going pretty high. And the Ivy League kid, Justin Watson. <laughs> Justin Watson. <laughs> yeah, he has a, a clipboard. He's writing on the receiver. Right. Yeah. Um. So I, I don't know. You know, I'm. I just don't know. I mean, I, I guess we'll see what happens there. But it seems to me like there's a decent chance that one of those three is not going to return value. Well, my my point was here, um, and to tie it back in, are we talking about a similar situation in Cleveland with Chubb and Joku, um, Landry and Beckham? Um, and I'm cheating a little bit because one of those is a running back, but the point remains. Right. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily think so. I think that they're kind of going where they where they should be a little bit. Where they bit. should be. Okay. Because you know. Landry and Njoku are going like a little bit later, like sixth, seventh round. Yeah, uh, and I don't. I think Njoku's maybe the one that's kind of the odd man out if there is. He's one. starting to concern me a little bit. Yeah, I mean and he's still super young, and he's. I think he has a good chance to break out. I just don't think he's in the command of the targets. Right. Uh, I definitely. I think he's the third guy in that uh, offensive uh, wide receiver. Well, or receptions, re- right. targets, packing order. Now I think Baker Mayfield's super talented. I think he's he's got a good head on his shoulders. But Dave, let's just paint a picture here where maybe the Browns start off one and three or two and two. Um, and, and there's chirping. There's some offensive chirping in that huddle. You know who's not going to be a chirper? David Njoku. I could see Beckham being a chirper. I could see Landry being a chirper. I can't see Njoku doing that. Yeah, that's very true. He seems more uh, I, I watched, subdued. He, not, he's like, um, I watched something. Maybe it was hard knocks. He's like into meditation and, and stuff like that. Like he's, very, he's a very centered individual. So I, I wish I, I could get there. Nah, that'd be great. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, we, we do too many low-rate podcasts to ever get to, to that level. That's that right. Dante Pettis off the board at 7.05 to Biplab Mandel. Daryl Henderson off the board as number four running back to Evan Silver. He did not grab Gurley, but he did grab Henderson. Uh, Eric Ebron, the second tight end, drafted by Aaron and Andrew Scott at the 7.07. Sterling Shepard, broken thumb or finger or Psyche, whatever. Uh, Sterling Shepard goes off the board at the 708 to Josh Hayes. Deshaun Watson, number two quarterback drafted tonight to Preem and McIntyre. Austin Hooper, as another team doubles up on tight end, that's DraftSharks.com's Matt Schauf. And then Andrew Luck at the 711. Lamar Miller, the 712 tonight as the number two running back chosen by Michael Salfino after starting off with five straight running back or wide receivers. Now he goes three straight running backs, Dave, as we get in the eighth round. Miles Sanders off the board as his number three running back. Now you are not the biggest Miles Sanders in the world, but you're talking about a potential Super Bowl contender, a potential uh, team, not even a potential team, a team with a really good offensive line, and a team that invested pretty significant draft assets into drafting Miles Sanders, Saquon Barkley's backup, at Penn State, would you be on board with Miles Sanders at the 801 as your number three running back? Because I'll tell you this, I don't like Sanders, but I'd be on board with that. Uh, I probably would not be. Uh, I think that Jordan Howard is going to command more carries. You still have Corey Clement to deal with. I mean, uh, is Sanders, they, you know, he's been coming along slowly. That's like that's the news that that's the scuttlebutt. That's what they're saying. And uh, the nice thing about it, the fact that it's best ball is you kind of don't have to figure it out. You just you know throw it against the wall and see what happens. Maybe he starts sometimes, maybe he doesn't, and hopefully. You know, for his from his perspective, hopefully he emerges nicely. He definitely has upside. Yeah. Uh, and, and they think, want him to be the guy, I think. Yeah, they do. They do want him to be the guy. Do you think that Doug Peterson and and who's the GM there? Where's Where's Terp? Who's the GM of the of the Eagles right now? Roseman or who, Howie Roseman? Is he still the GM? Whoever it is. But don't you think like, you know, they have these off season meetings and they're like, guys, we got to find out a way not to dedicate seventeen running backs onto our fifty three man squad. We need to pare this down to like three, you know, and they have it's a really zillion running backs every single year. It's just like, and this is the old ad. Now this is a college football thing, but it's like when you have 17 running backs, Dave, you have zero college football. When you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterback. Well, and they want him to emerge, but I mean, even if he does emerge, there's, there's still a time. Sh- there's still a running back timeshare organization. That's right. just the way they run their offenses. I don't see that changing. Marquez Valdez Scantling off the board at the 802 to Richie Nishura as his number four receiver. Carson Wentz is QB four tonight to Matt Schaub. That's Jay- interesting. Well, okay. Why is that interesting? Because he's the fourth quarterback taken. Over luminaries like Rogers, Mayfield, Murray. I mean, Murray. I understand, right. but. Uh, you know Mayfield and Rogers. I guess it's a you know that's fine. That's I, I guess it is interesting. More well, interesting. Where's, than I where's thought. Wentz's eighty? I mean, is he the sixth quarterback taken? Hey, eight, excellent eight? point, Dave. And I can tell you that Carson Wentz, on average, is going as QB eight at the eight All right. ten. All right, so QB eight. Yeah. So he went just a little bit early. So who didn't get taken? So we have Mahomes, Watson, Luck, 
Mayfield Rogers. That's uh, got five. Matt Ryan. Matt seven. Ryan is currently going ahead of. Okay, uh, so of he's him. the one that's not selected right. yet. Yep. Sorry, I shouldn't be saying this out loud. You know what? We, we're dealing with a lot of pros and Joes in this draft. You know they Matt know Ryan what's is. going have on. You heard of Matt Ryan? If you you have heard of him? Tough. Shit. You have pros that <laughs> that draft based on their livelihood, and then you have six Joes that are competing for a half million dollar grand prize in the FFPC main event this year. Which, by the way, uh, ran the numbers, and uh, I got to tell you. This is uh, the FFPC main event prize structure, $3.1 million this year, a $500,000 grand prize. That's an industry record. We may have been uh, overreaching a little bit, a little bit aggressive. We'll see what happens. But the early returns is, have been great, and we appreciate all the FFPC player support. To get to 2,400 teams, still going to be tough. So to get an additional team at $1,500 is sort of a no-brainer. So for anybody who is thinking about getting an additional team in the FFPC main event, whether you want to draft, la- draft live at Planet Hollywood or draft in the comfort of your own home, uh, $15, small price to pay to try to get a $500,000 grand prize. That will be my own personal. $15? Or just fi- did I say 15 I thought I'm I said not sure. It is cheap. 15 is good. $1,500 is, is what it is. Yeah, it's if you don't have any teams, you can buy you know, two, and then your second one is 1500 Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun this year watching that main event, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. Okay, moving on. Um, Jalen Samuels at the 404, I feel like, or excuse me, the 804, I feel like we've talked about a ton of him on this program. I'll, I'll move past him. Uh, Premium McIntyre, take him as the number three running back. Uh, Cortland Sutton uh, to Josh Hayes from Roto Baller as his number three receiver. Baker Mayfield to Team Scott as their number one quarterback, followed by Kiki QT uh, to Evan Silva. That is going to be his number three receiver in this league this year. Aaron Rodgers off the board to Bip Lab Mandel as his starting quarterback. Corey Davis, the bane of my dynasty existence, is going off the board at the 809 to John Paulson tonight as his number three receiver. Um, and then if you like tight ends, you're going to like the next, well, at least five of the next six picks. Trey Burton to Mike Edelman, Delaney Walker to Jake Seeley, and then Kyle Rudolph to Brian and David Petrunik with the final pick of the eighth round here tonight in the FFPC Pros versus Joes League number four. So a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of tight ends off the board in this round. Dave, I'm going to tell you this right now. There are two receivers that went off the board in this round, two receivers that I drafted semi to high, strong to very strong, picks <laughs> in dynasty rookie drafts over the last few years, Cortland Sutton and Corey Davis. Public service announcement, if you play in a dynasty league with me and you see those guys on my team, feel free to make me an offer. I'm probably going to accept it. What I don't know that? which guy I'm more concerned with for redraft purposes this year between Sutton and Corey Davis. You know, to be honest with you, <laughs> I'm kind of getting a little bit behind Corey Davis, and, and it's because holy cow, alert the because authorities! He's become he's you know he's so in, he's really inexpensive. He's the number one receiver on that offense. Yeah, um, undisputed, uh, and uh, you know he's still it's still his third year. He showed signs last year, so I, I think he's I think he might be all right. I mean, the thing is with Corey Davis in that spot in the eighth round, you still actually have upside with him. So. Uh, you do have downside, but I mean, even his downside, I don't know what he finished last year, but it might only be like wide receiver 30 or something. Are you going to look that up or should I? Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, if you're not too busy, you can look it up. Otherwise, you know what, Dave, I'm going to be a nice guy here. I'm going to go ahead and look it up for you. you don't <laughs> Sorry. Need, no, 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 don't apologize. It's fine. We, this is a shared uh, thing of duties on the show tonight, Dave, and I want to make sure that we're, we're sharing it. Do you have anything to report? Uh, yeah, Jeremy Roach is going to be late for the Terminator draft tonight, and... <laughs> So I'm texting Bryce to let him know. Uh, I, you're holding your phone up to me like oh, oh, I should announce the, it on this show. Oh, you show. mean about the show? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, like, well, because you kind of started to check your phone, and then you're like holding your phone up to me, and I'm like, okay, well, what do you have for He's us, like, Dave? who's the commissioner? I'm like, well, it's Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Terminator drafts, uh, is, is tonight the first? Yeah, uh, tonight is the Terminator kickoff. Yeah, so uh, check those out, myffpc.com, where you have to kick a player off every single week. Um, and then it's a, what is it, a $25,000 grand prize, I believe? Yeah, the record, 20, 25 Gs. And I will say this, drafting your best team is not the most difficult part of the contest. If you're able to remember to draft a player every single week, you are so far ahead of the curve uh, that uh, it won't even be funny. So join that, myffpc.com slash Terminator. Check that out. All right, what did you say? Uh, where did you think Corey Davis finished as a uh, wide receiver last year? I don't know, like 28, 30. 26. Oh, see, it's still right there. Yep. So, and last year was his second year. Last year was his second year. So, I mean, look at that. I mean, wide receiver 26, you're getting him in the, in the late eighth round. I mean, there's such a hatred for Tennessee that people are like, oh, Tennessee sucks. And, you know, never. Well, and I think part of that is Marcus Mariota was hurt quite a bit last year, too. Sure. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, I actually think there's 
as much as I've been hating on Davis, I've been trying to drive his uh, his ADP down for so long. Now, right. I'm, now I'm on board. I'm flipping the script a little bit. All right. Um, we need. I think we're gonna have to make a bet. Uh, and I got five on a wager here with uh, this player. It doesn't have to be tonight, but at some point, um, before the season starts. And that's Jordan Howard, who went at the 901 to Team Petruna here as their number four running back. I do not like this guy. I know Philadelphia went out and traded for him. I am not a fan of his for fantasy purposes. Uh, I, I am Team Sanders. I am Team Clement. And Jordan Howard just, you know, if he was this good, the Bears would not have given up on him. I am Team no running back from the Eagles. So yeah, that's okay, so do. that's going to be but tough I mean, to yeah, make a I wager. I never really liked Jordan Howard that much because, I, you know, he was a non-pedigree back. And then, of course, if, you know, a team deals you away, that's not a good sign. Okay. Uh, but I, I think I, between the two, I probably would take Howard, though, over Sanders. So if you want to make a bet on fantasy points, I'll take Howard over at, Sanders. At, oh, just, okay, yeah. Howard over – Okay, yeah, for 16 weeks. I'll take I, Howard I can over do that. Yeah, I'll do – so I, you have Howard. Yep. I have um, – what's his first name, his Miles? Name is Miles Sanders. Thank you very much. Uh, and we're doing total points, total fantasy points, over the course of um, 16 weeks. Yep. All right, so I got five on – I said Emmanuel Sanders because I'm so <laughs> used to betting on Emmanuel Sanders on this show. I got five on Miles Sanders. I got five on Michael Jordan Howard. <laughs> I got five on even that won't save him. All right, moving on. Mark Andrews is off the board to Jake Seeley as his number two tight end uh, at the 902 tonight. Mike Gesicki to Mike Edelman is his number two tight end. So we talked about, and we'll talk about Edelman's team here in a little bit, um, but he did indeed going up tight end, tight end. He must have been listening. Trey Burton in the eighth, Mike Gesicki in the ninth. Curtis Samuel off the board for John Paulson is his number four receiver. I like that pick quite a bit. Marvin Jones at the uh, 9.05 to Biplab Mandel is his number four receiver, Dave. Uh, yes, it is. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to say something. No. I, we're, <laughs> we are far from Frazier and Monroe on this show, uh, clearly, tonight. It's almost we're, like we're not in the same room. Yeah, we are. yeah, we, we I, are I'm in the gonna, same room. I'm going to look at you more now. It is Dave, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. David. Kyler Murray off the board. Well, David is what my mom David, calls. yes, yeah. Kyler Murray off the board to Evan Silva from EstablishTheRun.com. And looking in the uh, chat room and, and at BlogTalkRadio.com where we, we have this coverage going on right now after that pick, um, uh, we saw somebody, uh, Shane P. Hallam, said that he knew Evan Silva was going to take Evan, uh, uh, Kyler Murray here in the ninth round at the 9.06. Yeah, uh, Murray. Nice pick, buddy. Royce Fre <laughs> okay, so we got a, a mini running back run here. Royce Freeman to uh, Team Scott at the 9.07, followed by Kalen Balaj to Josh Hayes, Ronald Jones to Preem and McIntyre, and then Deion Lewis to Matt Schauf. First time in the night, I'm going to ask you, Dave, you look at those four running backs there, Royce Freeman, Kalen Balaj, Ronald Jones, Deion Lewis. Which guy do you like best for redraft purposes in 2019? Whoa. Not looking at the rest of the team construction, just whatever. I'm looking independently at right, yeah. those players. Um, <laughs> I guess Freeman, I, I think. I mean, Freeman has the most upside. Um, I, I do like Deion Lewis. I just I feel like he usually gets drafted later, though, so I, I, can't, I guess I... I think I'm going to have to go Freeman, go with Bryce Freeman and then Rojo after that. Do you think the – by the way, we should point out that Aaron and Andrew Scott picking uh, in the seven slot tonight took Philip Lindsay, Dave, at the 406, and then they did nab Royce Freeman at the 907. Great, great job. Do you think the disparity between those two players as represented in tonight's draft is accurate of where they should be going? Should they be further apart? Should they be closer together between Lindsey and Freeman? How are you? What's your read on that Broncos running back situation? Well, Lindsey is reported to camp and he's looked good. Everything is running with the ones, catching passes, passes hunky dory. Yep, yeah, exactly. I think it's actually kind of where it should be right now. Exactly how they drafted, it seems about right. Like fourth round, and then ninth round because Freeman was going like maybe a round or two earlier, and uh, now he's fallen a little bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's actually when you look at this draft, there's a huge, uh, a lot of picks where there are no running backs went. Um, so we, what was it, uh, the 804 all the way to the 907, only one running back got drafted. So there was a, a big, a big uh, wasteland of running backs there that no one, no one took in. Speaking of wasteland running, of running backs, I want to talk about my, one of my dynasty teams here tonight. I believe... Oh, how'd it go? Tell us about your... No, no, draft. no, not that dynasty league, a different one. Uh, Two-Packer is in the draft chat, or excuse me, the draft chat, the chat room right now. I sent him an offer, and we'll, we'll gauge this with the... With, we'll crowdsource this with the draft room tonight. I am in total sell-down mode in one of my dynasty leagues, and I have offered him Ronald Jones and Peyton Barber for a player he just put on the block, so you Curtis offer, Samuel. So you offer Rojo, yeah, right. Rojo and Barber, yeah. Yes, and a 2021 20, second. So he gets Jones and Barber, 
I would get Samuel and a 2021 second round pick. And I've already told you my thoughts on this. He has yet to act on this. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm of the opinion that the 20, the, 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 the second round pick was uh, not necessary and probably, a, you know, I, I, so, so like you for you, Rojo it, and Barber for Samuel. If you offered that to me, and I own Samuel. I'd probably turn that down right right away. No, without I'm, even the no, second. no, 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 no. But he's oh, I'm serious, Sam. So like he would never give up Samuel for I would, just I Jones would, and Barber. Yeah, I would not okay. give up Samuel to you for those two players, much less give away another. Right, two Packer is verbally saying no. And yeah. well, th- go ahead and decline the trade, you son of a gun. <laughs> just leaving me hanging here. No, and the only reason I offered it, I only offered it to him in that league because he was the only guy sweating me for Ronald Jones for like. Two or three months. I didn't offer it to anybody else. So I thought if there was one person that was going to take that, it would have been him. Yeah. And so not even him. In Carrington? In Carrington, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, and I, he put Samuel on the block, which yeah, is another true. reason. I. So I thought, well, maybe he doesn't he like Samuel as much as I do. He wants the first for a form, which right, is probably well, too high. Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. I'm guessing that's what he wants. All right. So moving on here, the final two picks of the ninth round here, Dave, tonight are Larry Fitzgerald at the 911 and Jordan Reed at the 912. Man, sign me up all day for Fitzgerald in the ninth round. I don't care if this guy is 60 years old. I'm still going to be drafting him, regardless of if he's playing in the NFL, the CFL, the XFL, the ZFL. I love Larry Fitzgerald. I, don't, I can't believe I don't even own his jersey. I have a Bolden you don't Cardinals. Own a, you don't own a Fitzgerald? I, I have a Bolden Cardinals jersey, and every time I thought about getting a Fitzgerald jersey, I'm like, I already have a Cardinals jersey. There's oh, no yeah. point. That makes sense. But, man, I love me some Larry Fitz. Uh, and in the ninth round, what? what just, okay. Let's let's do this right We're very now. Very excited. Give me receptions, yards, and touchdowns for Fitzgerald this year. No, come on. I, I'm put, like David. No, Dostey. listen. I know I'm putting you on the spot, but this is part of. But you give me that. The fun of the show. All right, I'll I'll, I'll give you mine, and then you can give me yours. <laughs> so Fitzgerald in the Cliff Kingsbury offense. Okay, where they're going to run 159,000 plays a game. So I'm going to put Larry Fitzgerald catches this year, 70 catches. I'm going to say he gets 875 yards and seven touchdowns. Okay, I actually had 80 catches for 950 and 8. Okay, so you wrote down just before you spoke. You're loving them even stronger than I am here in the ninth. Yeah, evidently I am. All right, so it's a super high volume offense. And, you know, Murray, if you've seen some of his practices, he has pinpoint accuracy. You talk about quarterbacks that don't have that, there's plenty. Murray's not one of them. So even if Fitz isn't super open, he doesn't really need to be because he will throw it. You know, he'll throw it to, to Fitz's window so only he can catch it. If you saw the one handed catch that Fitz made in practice, oh, it was awesome. It was fantastic. And so that's. Uh, but, I mean, you have to temper your expectations. 80 for 950 and 8, I don't think is all that fantastic. I mean, it's, it's pretty good, but it's not, you know, killing it. Yeah, it's not killing it, but it's the ninth round. So, you know, you don't have right, to absolutely. kill it. No, yeah. it's nice. Greg Olson, the first pick off the board in the 10th round here. He the second tight end for Michael Salfino. As Salfino waits until the ninth round to draft the tight end, and then he goes back-to-back. Jordan Reed and Greg Olson, a combined age between those guys of 374 years. Pretty crazy. Adrian Peterson, the next pick off the board. Of that. I can't see if you're smiling, but I can see you shaking your head. Adrian, radio Adrian Peterson right off the board after that at the 10.02. Deshaun Jackson, the deep threat for back in Philly for the Eagles this year. Deshaun Jackson to Matt Schaff, so he gets the hook up with Carson Wentz. And Deshaun uh, Jackson there. Justice Hill off the board for the number five running back chosen by Preeman McIntyre here at the 10 4 uh, D.D. Westbrook, a guy that I said, I don't get it last week. I think I wasn't this. You were on the show with me, and I said, I'm missing it on D. I I w- read a lot on him uh, this year. I looked at where he finished last year. I'm on board with D.D. Westbrook this year. He's going to be on my team in, in more than a few leagues, uh, no question, in 2019. I like that D.D. Westbrook pick for Josh Hayes. Nikhil Harry, the rookie for the Patriots, is the number three receiver drafted by Aaron and Andrew Scott. Chris Herndon off the board, the Jets tight end, the suspended Jets tight end to Evan Silva as his backup to David Njoku. And then if you like quarterbacks, you're going to like the remainder of this round. Matt Ryan to Bip Lab Mandel. Jared Goff to John Paulson. Cam Newton to Mike Edelman. Duke Johnson off the board as his number four running back. That is Jake Seeley. And then the final pick of the 10th round is Drew Brees as the starting quarterback for Brian and David Petrunic. Quarterback run here this round, Dave, as we get four of them off the board. But it was nothing compared to the 11th round. That was a great job by Bip Lab taking Matt Ryan there. First of all, it was a fantastic value to to, uh, to get a quarterback at that to get Matt Ryan at that spot, even with having Rodgers, because he knew that the four players that were drafting after him, none of them had a quarterback. And you look at what he forced. 
he forced seven out of the eight of the next picks were quarterbacks. I you're going to talk about it. Right. Um, I thought that was really good. He really did a great, really great job. Then. So, so if you were in a similar situation, you already took Aaron Rodgers in the eighth, you still would have been on board by forcing, you know, because when you force the issue, you don't always force the issue. Sometimes you think you're well, going through and it doesn't happen. Right, but. sometimes you don't. But Matt Ryan was a great value at that spot already because, you know, he should have, he kind of should have gone where Wentz went almost. Like Wentz got traded right. for Ryan. I mean, yeah. you know, Matt likes Wentz better. That's fine. But just it kind of, he got he kind of lucked out in that in that Ryan fell that far to him. I don't want to say this is a pros versus Joe's 2019 record, but it might be for most quarterbacks drafted in one round. Not six, not seven, eight quarterbacks go off the board here in round 11 tonight. And we'll kick things off here with Team Petrunic taking Kirk Cousins to back up Drew Brees. Then Jake Seeley gets his starter in Ben Roethlisberger. Boy, that is a classic bulky pick right there. Wait till everybody has all these quarterbacks, and then you draft your starter, and it's Big Ben. I, I do that all the time. Uh, well, Russell, what's wrong with that, right? I, nothing. I do it all the time, so I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'm a fan. <laughs> uh, Russell Wilson off the board to Mike Edelman here at the uh, 11:03, followed by Jameis Winston, uh, former number one over pick, uh, over one, a uh, number one overall pick, uh, and a former national champion for the Florida State Seminoles. Uh, Jameis Winston off the board as the backup t- uh, quarterback to John Paulson's Jared Goff. Jimmy Graham off the board to Bip Lab Mandel. So he gets a quarterback tight end hookup of Rodgers and Graham. Hey, they should combine for four touchdowns this year. Dante Moncrief to Evan Silva right after that. Geronimo Allison off the board to uh, number seven pick tonight. That's Aaron and Andrew Scott. That's their number four receiver. Ooh. Uh, Phillip Rivers. <laughs> is the backup quarterback to uh, Patrick Mahomes on rotoballer.com's Josh Hayes' squad. Dallas Goddard is uh, going to be backing up O.J. Howard for Preem and McIntyre. And then three more quarterbacks to end the 11th round. Dak Prescott, Matt Schauf, Lamar Jackson, Richie Nishura, and Mitchell Trubisky, Michael Salfino. Do you have a favorite quarterback uh, in that round, Dave, as far as all of them that went off the board? I'm going to read them again for all the listeners. Cousins, Roethlisberger, Wilson, Winston, Rivers, Prescott, Lamar Jackson, Trubisky. Who is your favorite 11th round quarterback for these players tonight? Uh, I'd have to take. It would have to be Wilson. Uh, I mean, Russell Wilson. I mean, he's they're a low volume offense, but he still runs the ball a lot. He's a Pro Bowl player. Fan, you know, he's just really. He's just a great football player. Big Ben's older. Kirk Cousins. I don't. You know, I think there's been arguments that Kirk Cousins is just not that talented of a, of a player. Jameis has accuracy issues and still got the Sheamus stuff going on. I, you know. I'm, I, I'm, I'm the question, famous stuff. I, I, I question Winston's talent, you know, even sniffs Russell Wilson's. And then, uh, you know, Rivers, Prescott, Lamar Jackson, Trubisky. You know, I don't mind the Jack Prescott, uh, Prescott pick or even Lamar Jackson. or he, Any of these picks are fine, but uh, Wilson's the guy I would prefer. Dave, I just made contact with uh, the notorious BIP himself, Mr. House of Cards. Oh, he's calling in? Cool. No, he's not calling in. But You know, this is a call-in show. Now, listen, he remember, BipLab is doing two drafts at once right now. Yeah, the other one's he just, over. He, you know, he just told me he has a partner tonight that he's drafting here. You want to know who his partner is in the FFPC Pros versus Joes? Former High Stakes Lowdown and High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour guest, Aunt Jemima himself, John Terry, partnering up with BitLab Mandel to just destroy the other 11 owners in this league tonight. I just... I. Just became privy to that. What knowledge. do you do? Say it again. Terry and Mandel teaming up oh, wow. to uh, to take on this league tonight. So I really appreciate that uh, knowledge, no question. All right, move on to the twelfth round here. Josh Allen to Michael Salfino. So he gets his two quarterbacks thus far through uh, twelve rounds. Mitchell Trubisky and Josh Allen. Jack Doyle is the twenty second tight end drafted. Uh, Ricky, uh, excuse me, Richie Nashura takes him as uh, tight end uh, number. <laughs> just noticed. Cocktails and dreams in the chat room, Dave. He says, "How do these guys do more than one draft at one time?" I don't know, man. It's, it takes a special talent. Look, rookie, you can figure it out one of these days. <laughs> Learn from the best, year of Bros versus Joe. I was always good to get the noobs in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Doyle is the 1202 pick. Tyrell Williams off the board is the number four receiver for Matt Schaub. Jimmy Garoppolo backing up the Sean Watson for Preem and McIntyre. Zay Jones. Uh, goes off the board as the number five receiver to Josh Hayes. I'm just curious what his ADP is before we get back to the action. He normally goes super late, the 16th round, and uh, Josh Hayes making him a part of his team here in the 12th. Uh, certainly a, a concern of his uh, is receiver, given that he went uh, running back, tight end, quarterback to start off the draft. Uh, we'll see if he keeps hammering that receiver position. 
Uh, touchdown Tom Brady to Aaron and Andrew Scott, followed by Sam Darnold. Uh, what, what is it, uh, 43 years separate those two guys, I think, somewhere around there. Sam Darnold to Evan Silva as his backup quarterback. Damian Harris, the rookie running back for the Patriots, to Bip Lab Mandel and John Terry, as we just learned. And then a trio of receivers here in the 12th. Golden Tate, the suspended Golden Tate to John Paulson. Paris Campbell, who's dry, uh, drawing rave reviews in Colts camp. Uh, to Mike Edelman, Deshaun Hamilton right after that to Jake Seeley, and then uh, Petrunic, Team Petrunic at the one spot goes with three straight quarterbacks, Breeze, Cousins, and now Derek Carr, the final pick of the 12th round. One thing I think we should point out here, Dave, is we talk about people being accustomed to best ball drafts, people being accustomed to high stakes uh, best ball drafts. I think that's pretty true of what Mike Edelman has done here tonight. Now, say what you will about his tight ends. He waits until the eighth round, and he gets Burton and Gesicki. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of either of those guys, but whatever. But then after that, he gets Newton and Wilson as his starting or his top two quarterbacks. He gets Paris Campbell, who I think think I'm totally on board with him now. Uh, You get him in the 12th round as your number five receiver, and then we'll get to Campbell's been lighting up camp allegedly. We'll get to the Justin Jackson pick here in a second. But to get him in the 13th round when everybody and their mother is, you know. It, it, it's like, do you ever see World War Z? Uh, yes, with, I have. With, okay, where all those zombies are, are like ripping each other apart trying to get up that wall. That's what everybody's doing in these high-stakes drafts to get Justin Jackson, and he's still able to get him in the 13th <laughs> round here tonight. I think he's done a very, very nice job after stacking his running back and receiver positions early. So kudos to Mike Edelman here. Um, Campbell's nothing but a dark throw. Okay, so okay, so <laughs> this, now this is the second time you said that. I think this one Josh was a Mac, bit. Josh Mack. Josh Mack. Josh McAtee said that said that that's what you called him uh, on Twitter when. when yeah, or, well, say, not not he, Josh McAtee. Uh, Ryan Poole said that you had called uh, Paris Campbell a dart throw when Ryan Poole took him last week in Pros versus Joes. And um, I know you're saying it a bit tongue in cheek, but let's just seriously assess this here for a second because you look at the Colts passing game. You have overachieving Eric Ebron. You have slowly becoming decrepit Jack Doyle. And he, then, he, and, okay, first of all, Jack Doyle, who is you know supposedly looking good, running with the ones, um, had a solid season. Okay, well, you're not proving my point here. So let's move on past Doyle. You don't like Funchess? Uh, not really. I, I, by the way, I heard some rumor that Funchess got carted off. That might be incorrect. Oh, I'll have to look today. That I don't. Up. I but I didn't see it on Roto World, so that might be inc- my you know that's. I just have the app that sometimes I'll get updates, but uh, I guess he must not, must not have. Um, not, yeah, yes, I, I'm not a fan of punch. Just right. Not, not seeing that at all. But remember, everybody's trying to beat each other to, to the punch on these injuries in right, the training camp. So we're yeah. So two a lot of great. Andrew Luck's great. I get it. Yeah. So and they don't throw to Marlon Mack all that much, and they're throwing to Naheem Hines. So maybe so, Campbell should have a role. Campbell should have a lot of targets. Campbell's a rookie. He's you know he's doing all this stuff. He's you know they picked him high. They invest a lot of draft capital, Dave. Why don't you like him? You should host this show with yourself. I have nothing else to add to that question. Well, I know because I've, I've heard it a thousand times before, and it's fine. You know maybe he's maybe he has a great rookie season. Generally, rookie wide receivers, if you have 600 yards and five touchdowns as a rookie, that's a really good rookie season. Right. Uh, when Cooper Cup he had a really good rookie season. It wasn't. It, you know who had a really great rookie season? Sammy Watkins had a great rookie. Yeah, season. he did. And. Uh, but very few and far between do people have do these receivers actually come out and kill it as rookies. So he's a freaking dart throw this year in redraft because he, maybe he's going to have 300 yards. Maybe he's going to have 400 yards. Corey Davis is a rookie. Oh, shit, he was taking fifth overall. Right. He's going to kill it. What did Corey Davis as a rookie? Jack crap. He was <laughs> terrible. So he, and, and Paris Campbell wasn't taking fifth overall. He was taking whatever he was taking. So yeah. we'll see what he does. Do you? Um, I'd be willing to bet anyone a thousand dollars right now that Andy Isabella has a better rookie year than Paris Campbell. Oh, hey! So uh, anyone who wants to put their money where their mouth is, then I'm happy to make that wager. Who is your? Just curiously, who is your top 2019 only redraft rookie receiver? Who is who? Who puts out the Isabella. best? Isabella. Isabella, be, better than anybody else, in my opinion. Who's number two? I don't know. I mean, I have Campbell, to, Harry, probably Marquise Brown. No, no. I mean, I don't know. Debo to... Samuel. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, it, it very well could. The be cavalcade Campbell. of crap after that. No, it's not. I'm not. It's not necessarily the case. But I mean, I, there's no one that is just in, instantly standing out to me necessarily. Right. Now, granted, right. I have an. A, I admittedly, and this could cost me a thousand bucks. I have an. <laughs> I have an, a, a, an affinity for Andy Isabella, but I right. think he's just was a, is a super talented player on a, a super on an emerging offense. Kyler Murray. Speaking of that, Kyler Murray is being drafted as the seventh overall quarterback, going back to our earlier conversation. Yeah. And where are his receivers being drafted? 
Christian Kirk, like the eighth, ninth round. Fitz, eighth, ninth round. Isabella, seventeenth round. Something's wrong with that. Why is Murray? Now, granted, Murray runs the ball, right? But I mean, nevertheless, I mean, he's still got to throw this. You know, and this is going to be a, an offense that's a super up tempo offense. You're going to be running three and four wide receivers all day long. Um, not to like, mention Hakeem Butler, Dave. Yes, also him. <laughs> Or not. Golden Tate is the wide receiver 40 right now in FFPC best ball drafts. Now, since he has uh, been announced a, of him taking some sort of fertility drug that triggered the uh, uh, NFL uh, drug policy, uh, he has fallen, and he has gone as late as the 1305 in FFPC best balls over the last three days. Tonight, he goes at the end of the 12th round. That is the 1209. Now, given what we know about Golden Tate, and given what we know about the rest of the Giants, uh, receivers or lack thereof here as they just signed TJ Jones. We'll see where he goes tonight. I bet he gets taken. Uh, Golden Tate at the 1209. You on board for that? Is that a spot that you'd be taking Golden Tate? What round is it? At 1209 for Golden yeah, that's Tate. that's effectively getting free, and he's, he's kind of their number one receiver right now. So, uh, yeah. For well, sure. I mean, until he comes back from suspension. I, w- I wonder if he actually gets off on that. Nah, he's not going to. No? I, well, what do you want? you want to put five on that? Hell no. That's what I thought. All right, moving on. That is the uh, 12th round tonight. I'm going to take you through the 13th round here as uh, we move forward through the hour number two here of tonight's draft coverage for the 2019 FFPC Pros versus Joes League number four. Uh, you will lose league tonight. Star-studded one, both for the Pros and Joes. Well, I guess they all are. Uh, let's get through the 13th round. Peyton Barber is the uh, 1301 pick tonight. He is the number five running back drafted by Brian and David Petrunik, the father-son duo picking at the 101 tonight. LaShawn McCoy, oh, how the mighty have fallen. I think that's the fourth consecutive draft I've said that about when McCoy got drafted. He goes at the 1302. Justin Jackson already mentioned him at the 1303. Jarek McKinnon off the board to John Paulson as his number four running back. Devin Funches. A uh, guy we talked about earlier goes to Biplab Mandel. I'm sure Biplab heard us talking about him. He's like, oh, what's going on with Funches? I better draft him. So he and John Terry take Funches there at the 1305 tonight. Tyler Eifert uh, to uh, Evan Silva is his number three tight end. Deontay Foreman and his one and a half Achilles go to Aaron and Andrew Scott here at the 1307. Jason Witten off the board as the backup tight end to George Kittle for Roto Ballers Josh Hayes. Followed by DK Metcalf at the 1309 tonight. That is the first receiver that Prem and McIntyre have drafted since Adam Thielen at the 309 tonight. Devin Singletary, who may or may not be the starter in Buffalo. Probably not, but we'll see. Uh, Devin Singletary in the 13th round to Matt Schauf. Followed by Chris Thompson, the pass-catching running back out of Florida State to Richie Nishura. What? Singletary might be the starter. Uh, He's been getting a lot of first-team reps, yes. Interesting. Now, that could be because they want to save the... um, the wear and tear of Frank Gore and LaShawn McCoy, of which, you know, there's no way that those guys have wear and tear. They can only have one or the other at this point. <laughs> because there's just, there's just no, there's nothing left there. And Matt Breed of the final pick of the 13th round tonight to Michael Salfino. Okay, so Devin Singletary, knowing what you know now, that he has been taking a lot of first-team reps. Yeah, I'm actually seeing Mike Florio's article. Yeah, there. from profootballtalk.com. He's plenty of first-team reps. So Devin Singletary, Dave. <laughs> At the uh, 13th round, you on board with that, with Matt Schauff taking him there? Uh, you know, I think Devin Singletary is a very unathletic, low-talent player. But again, in the 13th round, sure. This sounds not? like a Trump tweet. Well, you know, he's, he's a, he's a you know, low in motivation. He's a low IQ individual <laughs> yeah. drafted here. I, you know, I don't know. I, I guess I can see the pick. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, and again, in best ball, so many things can it's happen. It's a dart throw, Dave. That's for sure. So many things can happen, though, that... Uh, it could work out for him fine. I mean, McCoy could still technically be cut. That's one, right. one consideration. Gore is on his last legs, and he has been for 10 years now, and he continues to actually produce. Uh, I don't know. I don't see a huge upside with Singletary because, again, I don't think he's all that great. But, I mean, there's a chance. They want him to succeed. That's the most important thing. The GM would, if, if, there was, if he had his druthers and the, even the coach, they'd probably love to have Devin Singletary emerge as a starter. Oh, no question. Uh, and, and go with the Allen Singletary backfield for the next half decade. Um, that should net them, what, one division championship? Will the Patriots get four? Somewhere around well, there. Brady will still be playing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, speaking of uh, still playing, let's talk to uh, the person calling us in from the 610. I want to go to the phone lines right now and get him on the air. You're on the air on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour with Dave and Balky. Who is this? Gentlemen, it's Darren Armani. How you doing? Darren, our money. Darren, you know, it's weird that, first of all, we have to thank you not only for putting the pros versus Joes together, as you do each and every single year, but 
uh, also for supplying all this great ADP content that, that I referenced throughout the program. And you are getting ready to defend your belt as you are a, coming off a league championship in the Pros vs. Joe's competition last year. The pressure's on, man. Eh, no pressure. We'll just uh, we'll de- we'll deal with it. You know, I, I got the ten <laughs> pick that on uh, Wednesday night and no Tuesday night. Yeah, Tuesday night. And we'll just uh, we'll see what falls to us down at the ten spot. You you never know what's going to happen. Don't exactly you can't really have a plan there. You you kind of kind of react to to what the what the people are giving you. So we'll see. Well, so Darren, I was on Twitter earlier today and I I, I heard that you're a big fan of AJ Green. Oh my God! That, it's a, it's, <laughs> can you not see that coming? Every, it's this guy, <laughs> the guy is, is, looks like Gumpy out there, and you know it, it's he gets hurt every year. So you know it, it was a, it was a you know I, I tweeted that back in March saying this guy is fragile and you know it's a matter of time before he gets injured. And sure enough, you know it's what second day of camp and he's he's on crutches already. So and now it's going to be eight weeks or whatever. They're going to say week two, and then it's going to linger, and then. Is this a guy you want to own going into the season? I mean, you better get him damn cheap. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't <laughs> even think about it until like the sixth or seventh round. It's just, but it's just, for the most part, he's a, a, a on on my do not draft list. So yeah, whatever. Yeah, so he went at the five oh five oh seven tonight, and uh, I had, I had piped in on that little Twitter conversation because I I got to get on Twitter. Whoever that person was, ridiculous. someone had you know someone had was kind of a, you know arguing with you about it, and then. Uh, he equated it to uh, injuries befalling receivers uh, similarly to lightning striking the same person twice. And I, lightning you know, striking. I, I, and, 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 yeah. and then he was saying when he gets when he hurts his ankle on the basketball court, he gets back in right away. I'm like, whatever. You know, look, look at the injury history for this guy. So, you know, it's everybody's entitled their opinion, and people can draft who they want. That's what it comes down to. So, no big deal. And, and you know, I've seen these people piping in. Well, he's never had had issues with his like left foot or left ankle or left leg. So it's it's always the right one. But I almost wonder if like you know, you 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 have all this these problems with your right leg, and then you start your body overcompensates, and then it creates injuries or potential for injuries on the other side. And like we've seen this happen before. It's happened in basketball. It's happened in baseball. It sure as hell, it's happened in football plenty of times too. And I wonder if that, you know, and I, I'm just speculating because I don't know what caused it. Tyler Boyd would say the field apparently. Um, but I think you make a good point, Darren, that this guy has missed at least three games, what, every year for like the last three or four years, and, and now he's due to do it again. And I think if you look through – you know, Bengal colored glasses, you're hoping week one or week two, but when, when it remains, it's, there's a very real possibility. He is not back by week two. And even when he does come back, say week four, week five, he might be on a snap count. And then you're talking about like week eight or week nine, and you're hoping for him to be at full strength by then. And even that's not a given. All right, eight or nine, all right. Well, I'm just saying, there's, there's something, he's 31 years old. The Bengals chose to re-up with Tyler Boyd, not him, pre-injury. So I mean, there is and something they, to be said they, for that. Then they, you know, they're they're rototilling the practice field for Christ. Yes. Christ the day before the, their practice. <laughs> oh, the Bengals set them up, Dave. <laughs> the rototiller the out Bengals there. The Bengals set them uh, up. Where was right. Marvin Lewis? That's what I want to know. Yeah. They made they made all the then. routes first, and then and then send out Tyler Board afterwards. Yeah, you know, exactly. So yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> you see those nice little grooves, Tyler? We want you to run in those. My whole, my, by the way, my whole point <laughs> about the lightning thing. The only reason I even posted was just that to 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 argue that. Uh, prior injuries are not predictive of future injuries. To me, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. It's like when Jordan Reed used to get drafted in the third round, and then he gets hurt, and then why is he drafted in the third round again in that case? You know yeah. what I mean? No, he gets drafted in the 11th round. Yeah. Why? Because he gets hurt all the time. So anyway. Darren, we're, we're, we're yeah. through uh, three and a half pros versus Joe's drafts thus far. You've, you've bared witness to, to all of them. Can you tell us uh, the highlights or anything that stood out to you or, or what your takeaways have been thus far as you get ready for your draft on Tuesday night when you're picking from the 10 spot? They've all been pretty tight. So, I mean, some years we get people who don't really know what they're doing, um, but it's, everybody's representing themselves well. Um, as far as the draft tonight goes, I do like Edelman's team at three, and I like right. I like uh, Salfino's uh, not Salfino uh, Shaw's team at ten. So, uh, Shaw has the uh, the Eagle stack going. I like those two tight ends, Ingram and Hooper. Um, and it, that he 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 uh, went the uh, three backs and Joe Mixon at ten, so his value. I think you're going to see him. You know, he was kind of floating around late first round, then he kind of faded. But you probably see him back up in the first round more often than not. Um, so those are the kind so, of those are the two teams that kind of like stand out right now. 
So Darren, you're you're you know as a you're an Eagles fan, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So I I think that Schauf is is an Arcega Whiteside and a Clement away from drafting the greatest pros versus Joe's team in history, according to you, right? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know about Arcega Whiteside, but uh, you know he. I mean, top three bulky, no question. But best <laughs> ever, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see uh, what, what what happens with that. Um, can you, as long as you're piping in, and and I don't know if we'll get a chance to talk to you because you'll be in draft mode on on Tuesday. But you know, I, I talked about the FFPC uh, ADP that's that's available on FantasyMojo.com. That's not all you have there. You have a ton of resources for fantasy players there, right? Yeah, so ADP is is probably the most popular thing. But when you get into this uh, point of the draft season, the draft boards are important because values are, are changing daily. Like, we're now we're in training camp. So what a player is going for in the afternoon versus what he's going for in the evening could be drastically different. So we have all the draft boards for all the best ball drafts going on. And we also have the, ter- the Terminators have been kicking off. So I think you said the first live one is tonight. So we'll have Tonight. the coordinator drafts tomorrow. Yeah, so, I mean, we got all those. I like to look at the draft boards every morning to see what happened the night before. ADP is good as a cross-reference, you know, if you're going to draft to get something. But if you want to see where values are at at any point in time, I like to look at the live draft boards from the previous night. So we have that. Um, we got, you know, we've got the archives of the FFPC going back to, I think, 2010 now. Pretty much every draft board. Wow. Um, and the um, the other important thing that people want to look at are, you know, winning teams from prior years. So we have the list of all the winners, uh, the, the big money winners, basically from every, you know, if it doesn't matter if it's best ball, if it was main event, if it was football guys. And then we cross-reference, cross-reference that. You can link from a winner to, to his draft board and see, you know, what players, um, he you know, what was his strategy. And we have articles on the, on the different uh, – um, strategies people have used in the past for main event and FPC. I mean, the, you could spend days going through all this stuff. It's kind of accumulated over the years, so it's just, um, you know, like I said, it's it's an archive of, of everything that's gone on the FFPC. He is coming off uh, a title in the George Blanda division of the Kings Classic, a title in the Walkman division of the FFPC Pros vs. Joes, and a title in the Dwight K. Schrute division of the Scott Fishbowl. That's it gives is, all that good data. Yeah, exactly. And you can get that data. You have access to that data at FantasyMojo.com. Follow Darren on Twitter at FantasyMojo, the number one source of FFPC ADP data. He's the founder of the Pros vs. Joes. He's drafting and trying to defend his belt here on Tuesday night. We look forward to that, Darren. Thank you so much for chiming in. Thank you so much for everything you do for this competition. And good luck on Tuesday night, my friend. All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Darren Armani, ladies and gentlemen, a gentleman, a scholar, and a pretty damn good fantasy football player as well. Always good to hear from that guy. He'll be gunning for a $500,000 grand prize in the FFPC main event this year. Very excited to see that, and I know he's pumped up for it. All right, Dave, I, um, I'm, I'm at a loss here, and I want to go back. I think it was round 14. We talked is, about Singletary a little bit. Is where we did. That was 13. Never okay. talked about Hawkinson or Sanders. Or right, because that, that was 14. Okay, so here's, here's what we should do. Let's go through round 14, and then we'll get into some team analysis here uh, for the remainder of the show. But round 14 was kicked off by TJ Hawkinson, who I haven't checked my dynasty draft that auto drafted tonight after I set my rankings in my queue. I'm sure <laughs> Hawkinson. No, Park? no, no. I'm sure Hawkinson <laughs> somehow made it on my roster there because I have him in literally every dynasty league, it seems like. Dude, there's nothing wrong with that. He's doing great. He's doing good. We'll see what happens. And he's the number three tight end for Michael Salfino. Mm, num, 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 num. Right. I love that. At the 1401. No, Manny, man, you know, that's so funny. It's like I have three popular dynasty players that go off the board here in the first three picks of the 14th round. Emmanuel Sanders, who I've since dumped in all my, all my dynasty teams, but he was a stalwart on the Balkman dynasty teams over the last few years. Emmanuel Sanders to Richie Nishura here, and then Michael Gallup, the guy I begrudgingly took in the early second in a lot of drafts last year, and now I can't get him off my roster fast enough. Michael Gallup to my, Matt Schauff here at the uh, 1403. Long receiver run here. Hopefully you like rookies and uh, second-year guys because there's a bunch of them here. Andy Isabella to Preem and McIntyre. Anthony Miller from the Bears to Josh Hayes from Roto Baller. Nicole Hardman is the 1406 tonight to Aaron and Andrew Scott, and then James Washington to Evan Silva. A couple of tight ends, uh, Noah Fant to Biplab Mandel, and then Darren Waller uh, goes to John Paulson from 4for4.com. And to round up the 14th round here, Dave, 
Ito Smith to Mike Edelman. That seems late for Smith. Uh, Bears defense to uh, Jake Seeley as the first defense off the board at the 14-11. And Malcolm Brown, the almost lion but current Ram, goes to Petrunic, uh, Team Petrunic, who, by the way, are big Rams fans. I don't know if you know that. Um, but he, they take Malcolm Brown here at the 14-12. Um, you said it was seems late for Ito Smith? Seems late for Ito Smith. Well, I, thought, I thought he was more like a 10th, 11th round. Yeah, Dave, the reason it seems late for him uh, is because it is late. Uh, it's the 1208 is where he's been going right, over the last three days. Wow. Yeah, so pretty good value there uh, for Ito Smith going to Mike Edelman. And again, you know. I mean, what's the, there's no reason for it. I mean, there's no bad news, is there? We are, no. And we're, we're going to get into team analysis here. Spoiler alert, I'm going to like Mike Edelman's team. Uh, but let's get into it. We'll start off with uh, Brian and David Petrunik's team here at the one spot. Running backs, Saquon Barkley. Todd Gurley, Latavius Murray, Jordan Howard, Peyton Barber, Malcolm Brown. Receivers Mike Evans, Robert Woods, Robbie Anderson. Tight ends are Vance McDonald, Kyle Rudolph, Gerald Everett. Uh, quarterbacks are Drew Brees, Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr. Greg Zerline is the kicker. And uh, the Rams defense is the uh, defense. <laughs> so I look at this team, Dave, and, and you know, oh, okay, on tight ends, I can get on board with that. Okay on the running backs, not my favorites, but I can definitely get on board, especially with that depth. Um, the quarterbacks are great, you know, 10 through 12, Breeze, Cousins, Carr, but the receivers, yikes, only three of them through 17 rounds. Yeah, I guess I'm just not quite sure I understand the reasoning between, why, as to why they did that. So I, it's gonna be, I, I can't really care for the team because I don't like, the, you know, as you as said earlier that I love receivers, they're very important, and uh, I just – I can't uh, – I don't understand. I don't understand why they're taking kickers and defenses and not receivers because other people are going to ignore that they took Zerline and the defense and that they took Malcolm Brown and, and Barber. Like, they really – honestly, once you have Barkley, Gurley, Murray, and Howard, they could probably have ignored running back until around, like, 23 or something like that. To be honest with you, if they, especially when you're so, you know, kind of short at a receiver. So, uh, I'm, I, I don't really get that. Yeah, I mean, I, teach their own. I, yeah, and, and I would expect uh, Petruna, uh, Team Petrunic here to pound the receivers in the second half of the draft. Will it be enough? I don't know, but the other positions are looking pretty good. It just gets tough when it's like wide receiver 70 to, to 90 or whatever right. it's going to be. Yeah, uh, well, that's why you get to take a zillion of them. 2016 uh, FFPC Pros versus Joe's overall champ. It is Jake Seeley from The Athletic. Here's how his team has turned out thus far. Running backs, Ezekiel Elliott, Josh Jacobs, Darius Geis, Duke Johnson, LaShawn McCoy. Receivers, Antonio Brown, Kenny Galladay, Chris Godwin, Will Fuller, and Deshaun Hamilton. Tight ends, Delaney Walker, Mark Andrews, and Will Disley. The only, uh, oh no, two quarterbacks now, excuse me. Ben Roethlisberger, Nick Foles, uh, Bears and Jaguars on defense. So Dave, I, you know, this squad, um, there's, there's some players on here that I wouldn't draft, which kind of clouds my judgment a little bit. Um, team construction-wise, I... I, I you know, I, I feel like he did an okay job at tight end. I, I, I guess it's not my favorite tight ends there. And the receivers, I, I'm not a Hamilton – excuse me, I'm not a Fuller guy. Uh, I'm not a Galladay guy. Uh, running backs are, are – they're okay. I mean, Elliott and Jacobs are going to get all they can eat. But Geis is your three when we don't exactly know what's going on with his knee. Uh, we don't know. Duke Johnson should have a significant role, though he has a hamstring issue right now too. Um, and they only have two quarterbacks through 17 rounds, and one of them's Nick Foles. Eesh, I don't know. <laughs> so I, I guess this isn't, isn't my favorite team, but God forbid me call out the, the, the champ here. Um, when you come at the king, you best not miss. So I'm not coming at him. But uh, not, not my favorite Jake Seeley team I've ever seen uh, him draft. Uh, you know, you kind of nailed the analysis. I, I don't really have a whole lot to add to that. I agree with you on a lot of the players. are just not my players that I would normally take. I thought it was uh, – I thought the way he constructed the, the roster is actually not bad, although I'd right. been waiting on that second quarterback. You know, Foles, you know, it, it's not bad, though, in a way, because, you know, he did an interesting move by taking two defenses and then taking Foles, realizing that, you know, that it's getting just to be, like, you know, scraps. And getting Foles in the 17th after all those quarterbacks went isn't too bad, to be honest No, with it's me. not too bad. I, I mean, instead of the Jaguars' defense, I, probably, I mean, look at the three quarterbacks that went that round after, Stafford, Mariota, and Dalton. I would have rather had those as my number two quarterback and, and then still taking Foles. You know, there's only – there's three defenses off the board here, and we're almost coming up in the yeah. end, seventh, end of the 17th. He's got two of them. Yeah, I mean, I per, personally, for me, I would have gone a whole different direction. You know, even in 12, 12, 13, 14, I would have probably grabbed – um, I would have grabbed, I don't know, probably Stafford and Dalton two rounds earlier. Right, you know yeah. I mean? And just so I had them, you know what I mean? But uh, 
I don't know. If, I, I, I almost think that when it came to him in the 14th where he's like, okay, here's where the defense run is going to start. I'm going to grab two of them, and then it just never hit. You know? Yeah, that could be. That's totally possible. Uh, so, you know, you want to misread the board, misread it in, in the mid-rounds like that, but not early on. I don't so. really mind Delaney Walker and Andrews, though. I think that's absolutely no, pretty bad. No, pretty right. I think you do a lot worse at tight end. So I, I think you did a nice job there for waiting till round eight to draft one. Uh, Mike Edelman, former guest of this show. Let's get into his team. McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Carrion Johnson, Justin Jackson, Ito Smith, Tony Pollard, uh, running back, DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley, Mike Williams, Christian Kirk, Paris Campbell, and Jamison Crowder at receiver. Uh, tight ends are Trey Burton, Mike Gesicki, and Matt Lacoste. Uh, quarterbacks, Cam Newton and Russell Wilson. Dave, this is interesting because how often do you see Jamison Crowder as the gray beard among the receivers here <laughs> as he goes with Moore, Ridley, Mike Williams, Kirk, and Paris Campbell? Uh, the, the running backs are awesome with those. I and mean, carry on Johnson is your three. Forget about it. Uh, and then I like what he did late with Jackson and Ito Smith and Pollard. So I, I, you know, I said earlier on when we were talking about his team, I was going to like his team. The tight ends come through. This is going to be a tough team to beat when it comes down to it. Well, that is kind of a big if, although the Matt Lacoste pick is uh, seemingly a pretty good pick, actually. He's supposed to be uh, is starting. You know, Burden didn't have a very good year. I think he had 50, if I, I just looked it up, 54 for 569 and six touchdowns on a pretty good-sized contract. And then Jasicki did almost nothing as a rookie. And he was a super athletic player. But, I mean, rookie, coming, rookie tight end. Right, I get it. He, he was a super athletic player coming out, but he's not all that – I don't know. There's concerns about Gasicki, and he's on a terrible team. So I would really not want to go to war with those two tight ends. I would much, much, much rather have Delaney Walker and Mark Andrews. Right. Um, and he could have actually had Delaney Walker, not Mark Andrews per se. But I thought that, you know, for example, we're going to talk about Silva's team, but I thought that Chris Herndon would have been an, a, a much better selection uh, in the then ninth. Than Yeah, in my yeah. opinion. Because, no, I mean, mine you, lose, too. you lose four games of Herndon. Or Herndon, to me, I mean, he, he was pretty awesome as a rookie, actually. So you lose four games of that, but you still have a really good – quality player coming back in week five. But, again, teach their own. I also would prefer that he has a third quarterback. Newton and Wilson are fine, but I, I think he's still need a third one. The rest of his team, though, is not yeah, he'll get a third one. I mean, Don't worry you know, about that. Nits, top seven picks are fantastic. Right. I think Campbell, Justin Jackson, I know, although I rip on Campbell once in a while, he's a great pick there. Uh, you know, Smith, Tony Pollard is like the hype, high-stakes hype guy. And so he got him. Uh, nice job there. So, right. yeah, it's a great team, actually. Nice job. Uh, John Paulson, 4for4.com. Damian Williams, Aaron Jones, James White, Jarek McKinnon, Carlos Hyde and C.J. Anderson at running back. Receivers are Allen Robinson, Jarvis Landry, Corey Davis, Curtis Samuel, Golden Tate, and John Brown. Tight ends are Travis Kelsey and Hunter Henry, along with Darren Waller, excuse me, Jared Goff, and Jameis Winston at quarterback here. This squad, uh, Dave, I, I think to not take a running back from rounds 6 through 12 and then still get guys like McKinnon, Hyde, and Anderson, three guys that, that have some upside as backups was, was nice. Um, the fact that he waited until round six to grab uh, some receivers, he got some, you know, guys who are coming off bad years uh, in, in Robinson and, and Davis and, and to pair them with potential, uh, you know, breakouts in, in, in Samuel and, and John Brown. And you still get Golden Tate, uh, not to mention uh, Jarvis Landry on the squad. I thought that was a job well done there. Obviously, the tight ends are great, maybe the best in the league with Kelsey, Henry, and, and Waller. And then Goff and Winston are going to be serviceable. So I like this team as well. I think uh, John Paulson did a nice little job here. I did too. And actually, that was after we were questioning his tight end strategy. And uh, the, re the reason we think he did well is that around 6, 7, 8, 9, he just pounded those receivers. And that was smart. He, he dra grabbed guys we liked. And then getting Tate in the 12th round was really uh, was nice too. So he he, he we questioned the strategy, but he turned it around. He did a nice job. I like this team. Jaman Jaman, if I'm pronouncing that right, that's the Bip Lab Mandel John Terry team here with the uh, FFPC Joes at pick five. Uh, quarterbacks are terrible. Okay, well, t t no, but you were just praising the quarterbacks. That's a joke, Paul. Get, 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 get it together here. Too late in the broadcast to be doing jokes, my friend. Alvin Kamara, David Montgomery, Mark Ingram, Tevin Coleman, Damian Harris, Darwin Thompson at running back. Receivers Juju Smith-Schuster, T.Y. Hilton, Dante Pettis, Marvin Jones, Devin Funches, and Trey Quinn. Uh, tight ends Jimmy Graham, Noah Fant, Ian Thomas. Quarterbacks Aaron Rodgers and Matt Ryan. So the... Uh, problems I have with this squad, you wait until tight end or to round 11 to take a tight end, and the corpse of Jimmy Graham is your number one, followed by a rookie and Fant and a guy who, you know, granted, he has to rely on an injury for, for production, but that might be a better than 50% chance at this point for Greg Olson to go down. So I actually kind of like that pick. Um, not a fan of Pettis, Jones, and Funches. I like the Trey Quinn pick late uh, to go with Smith, Schuster, and Hilton, and I really, really like the running backs on this squad, Dave. 
Yeah, I guess the only – I mean, I like the team overall. He does a nice job with construction. I know what you're saying about tight ends. I agree with that. Although Graham, you know, draft him young, draft him old. So I believe in, you know, Graham and Fant and Thomas giving those guys a shot. But it, it could it could end up being dicey. So this that could really be a problem. So we'll hopefully, for his sake, Fant or Graham, both, you know, either one or both do well. I guess for my – Case, uh, I thought that Tevin Coleman was a little bit of a luxury pick that you really didn't need to take another fourth running back, and I would have probably grabbed a receiver there. Yeah. Uh, but that's just me. I mean, I, again, I would have a little more receiver, more more balanced that way. And then you wouldn't be, you know, having to count on Funchess or Troy Quinn or anything. You might have had a Landry or Allen Robinson, Robbie Anderson, whoever your choice was at that spot. But that's just my take. Uh, Rodgers and Ryan, I like, like I said, I like that a lot. I'd still grab a third one, and there's a couple out there. But yeah, there is. Um, Kaimi Fairbairn had to be their 18th round pick, though, ahead of those quarterbacks, Dave. Um, I, for any for the uninitiated, in this format with the FFPC, it is one quarterback, one tight end, one kicker, one defense, two running backs, two receivers, but two flexes. So you could start four running backs. And if Bip Lab Mandel and John Terry have their way, I'm sure they'd be loving to start Kamara, Montgomery, Ingram, and Coleman each and every week. EstablishTheRun.com's Evan Silva, formerly of Roto World and NBC. Uh, let's get into his squad. David Johnson, Devontae Freeman, Derek Henry, Daryl Henderson, Jalen Richard. Uh, receivers are Tyree Kill, Tyler Lockett, Kiki QT, Dante Moncrief, James Washington, Josh Gordon, and Antonio Callaway. Tight ends, David Njoku, Chris Herndon, Tyler Eifert, Kyler Murray, Sam Darnold, and Matthew Stafford are the quarterbacks. I like those quarterbacks. I like those tight ends as, as a group, Dave. Um, I like the stack of getting Moncrief and Washington on this team. I thought he did a nice job with his top four running backs. Now, I guess the concern was you take your fourth running back in round seven. You don't take number five until round 18. But he filled in with some higher upside guys in Gordon, in, in Callaway, um, and then he got, that's where he got those quarterbacks and tight ends. So I, I think this is a solid roster here. Um, as, as long as Henry's pulling through with a non-serious injury, this is going to be a competitive team down to the wire. Uh, I actually agree. I like, I like what Silva did in that he kind of balanced everything out. He's going running back and receiver, then running back, running back, receiver, then tight end. You know, he just did, he did a nice job kind of filling out the roster. Uh, and a lot of the picks I would have liked, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm not the Moncrief guy, but when he pairs Moncrief with James Washington, then I like it, you know, right? A little bit more awesome. palatable. Yeah, exactly. So Njoku, Herndon, Eifert, that's solid. Murray, Darnold, Stafford, that's, again, it's, it's nicely, it's a nice, balanced, good team. And I think that Jalen Richard pick in the 18th round, that's super, man. You know, it's a nice job. You know, oftentimes, Dave, you can throw a bunch of ingredients together into something the Canadians call what you got stew, and it doesn't turn out well. But then you have a Gordon Ramsay, you have an Anthony Bourdain, you have an Adam Richmond, a Jada De Laurentiis and you throw together the perfect amount what of ingredients the at the perfect quantities, and it becomes the perfect stew. Will Evan Silva have the perfect stew to get a 2020 main event? It's entirely possible, and uh, we'll be following that action as we move forward in the 2019 NFL season. Aaron and Andrew Scott, the FFPC Joes. Come on, that was great prose. Aaron and Andrew Scott at the seven pick tonight. Yeah, Nick, it was wonderful. Nick Chubb, Marlon Mack, Philip Lindsay, Royce Freeman, Deontay Foreman, Naheem Hines, and Jamal Williams at running back. Odell Beckham, A.J. Green, Nikhil Harry, Geronimo Allison, McCole Hardman, and Marquise Brown at receiver. Uh, Jared Cook, Eric Ebron, Ricky Seals Jones at tight end, Baker Mayfield, and Tom Brady. Well, I talk about opposite ends of the age spectrum there. Uh, at quarterbacks. I you know. <laughs> Nothing really stands out to me. That, you know, we talk about balance with Evan Silva's team. I, I think that this was a, you know, a, another nice balanced team here. I guess the question, if I have any, uh, and this can sort of be addressed, um, but it's receiver. You get, you have, you're going to be counting on, as part of your core of your top six, uh, three rookies here, and um, including a guy in Allison who is coming off the core muscle surgery. So I guess, I, I, I guess that's the problem I have with it, is, is I question the receiver depth. Yeah, that turns into a kind of a flex question, although they do have Lindsay and Iran to cover the, you know, the, the first and second flex, technically speaking. Ray Freeman is your five, too. I like that. Or as your four, excuse me. Yeah, no, that's solid. I mean, and the, Lindsay not, and Freeman. I don't know if I pointed that out, Dave. Right. You, you did earlier in the, sorry. In the broadcast. That's fine. And Foreman is nice, a nice upside pick. Hines is a pass catcher. Uh, so this team's got some, it's got some good stuff going on. But like you said, uh, they're kind of sacrificing a little bit. And on top of that, A.J. Green being your number two, your first four weeks in a best ball league, yeah, Geronimo Allison, I mean, it's just not likely that Nikhil Harry is going to emerge immediately out of the gates in the super tough-to-understand Patriots offense and just start crushing it, right? So then you have Geronimo Allison is really the guy you're counting on to fill in that second receiver role because 
Is Hardring going to do anything? Is Marquise Brown going to do anything? So I think that they're going to suffer point-wise at that WR2 spot. Yeah, Brown will have to uh, come back from this injury too sweet, as the kids say. And then Allison is going to have to be snaring a bunch of balls from the slot this year for, for that to work out until A.J. Green is healthy, no question. Rotoballer.com's Josh Hayes. I'll be on their program bright and early Wednesday morning at 6.35 a.m. Eastern time talking about this squad. Let's get a little preview of that conversation right now with Le'Veon Bell, Sony Michelle, Austin Eckler, Kalen Balage, and Mike Davis at running back. Uh, receivers, Brandon Cook, Sterling Shepard, Cortland Sutton, D.D. Westbrook, Zay Jones, Anthony Miller, Kenny Stills, and David Moore at receiver. Uh, tight ends are George Kittle and Jason Witten. Rece- excuse me, quarterbacks are Patrick Mahomes, Phillip Rivers, and the rookie from Washington, Dwayne Haskins. Kicker is Jason Myers. Not a fan of these receivers, Dave, uh, and I think that's my issue with this team. Uh, also, the tight end depth is leaves a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> A bad taste in your yeah. mouth. Yeah, wow. Jason Witten is your backup. Yeah. They got Kittle. Kittle's going to be fine. Kittle will be fine. Mahomes is going to be fine. Mahomes will be fine. <laughs> is that it? Nobody else is going to be fine? Well, there's some other people that might not be fine. You know, Zay Jones, I think like, Eckler's going to be fine. Yeah, Eckler could be a starting running back on that team, you know, for all we know. I know what you're saying, and I agree that the, the receivers uh, are, are parsed. There's a lot of them, and we'll just have to see if they emerge, really. And then, you know, Michelle Eckler, Balaj, counting on those guys, uh, to me that's tough to count on those, yeah. on those players. Uh, moving on to uh, the FFPC Joes in the nine spot, it's Jason Preem and uh, Josh McIntyre here. Uh, at running back, they got Tariq Cohen, Rashid, Rashid, Rashad Penny, Jalen Samuels, Ronald Jones, Justice Hill, Chase Edmonds, Dexter Williams. Receivers are DeAndre Hopkins, Michael Thomas, Adam Thielen, DK Metcalf, Andy Isabella, Devontae Parker, and Traquan Smith. Tight ends are O.J. Howard and Dallas Goddard. Uh, quarterbacks, Deshaun Watson and Jimmy Garoppolo. Kicker is Justin Tucker. So this squad, the to wait on running back until fi- the fifth round and get Cohen and Penny as your starters, two guys that may not start on their own teams, is a, a little bit questionable. Then you get an upside guy in, in Jalen Samuels, and then, um, you know, again, Ronald Jones and Justice Hill. Who, who the hell knows what you're getting with those guys? Edmonds and, and Williams rely on injuries uh, for value there. Uh, receivers are awesome with Hopkins, Thomas, and Thielen, A++ there. And then I like how they hit on these, these upside rookies and Metcalf and, and Isabella late. And then, you, you know, you get Parker and Smith. I mean, maybe they turn around. I, I don't know. Tight end depth is, is not my favorite here. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, you know, see Josh Hayes for this one with O.J. Howard and Dallas Goddard. So I have an issue with the tight ends, Dave. Um, and uh, running back core is, is not my favorite. You know, I would like this team a lot more. I mean, I, I'm beating a dead horse. I'm going to beat it tonight. I'm going to beat it in fifth and sixth uh, shows as well. Don't let PETA hear this. If they had, yeah, exactly. Well, the horse is dead. What do they care? Uh, it's still a horse. If they, if they had three quarterbacks and three tight ends, uh, I would like the team a lot more. And I, so because they don't, I don't care for it as much. I think Dallas Goddard was a really nice pick. I thought behind O.J. Howard. I don't mind their running backs, actually. I think they did a, a pretty good job with Tariq Cohen, Penny, Samuels, Jones, Justice Hill. Chase Edmonds is a nice pick, too. That's good. Right. And even Dexter Williams, super late. That's a, you know, he might emerge as he might emerge there. Running with the ones for part of the and practice speaking, today. There you go. And speaking of running with the ones, DK Metcalf is running with the ones. And actually, you know, every time I see his routes, you know, they show his routes on Twitter, he's awful. They're terrible. The routes yeah. are, got, you know, god-awful. But the team drafted him high, and he's running with the ones. And, of course, he made the best pick of the draft with Andy Isabella in the 14th round. Good yeah. job. Okay, so uh, game over. You're all playing for second. <laughs> That's it. After uh, Preeman McIntyre win this league. <laughs> Matt Schell from DraftSharks.com, a former Scott Fishbowl co-owner with me, as well as a former co-host of this show, Dave. Joe Mixon, Melvin Gordon, uh, Melvin Gordon I almost said Gornett. Wouldn't that be the greatest? Melvin Gornett and Leonard Fournette rolled into one. Joe Mixon, Melvin Gordon, Leonard Fournette, Dion Lewis, Devin Singletary, Giovanni Bernard. Uh, receivers are Alshon Jeffrey, Sammy Watkins, Deshaun Jackson, Tyrell Williams, Michael Gallup, Muhammad Sanu. Tight ends, Evan Ingram, Austin Hooper, Ben Watson. Uh, quarterbacks, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, Jake Elliott, and Austin Siebert at quarterback, a k- kicker, excuse me, and then New England Patriots defense. I look at this team, and I like the top three picks, obviously, and, and the running back core is good albeit not the deepest one in the world, although you could do worse would, with Lewis Singletary and Bernard. I think it's pretty darn deep. And then uh, the receivers, it's like, man, God, the, 
you know, we, we joked about Jeffrey and Watkins missing all this time. Deshaun Jackson, I mean, he's missed a lot of time over the years. Uh, and then you're talking about guys like Tyrell Williams and Michael Gallup. Uh, after that, Muhammad Sanu is your number six. I, I, I can't get on board with that receiver core. I like the tight ends, though. Evan Engram, Austin Hooper, and Ben Watson are going to do some damage there. And Wentz and, and Prescott, I think, can, uh, can uh, move the sticks as well. Yeah, I love the running back. As much as I love the running backs, I kind of hate the receivers. So it's like you have yeah. the, the one with the, the good with the bad. And uh, that's the facts of life, right? It is the facts of life. <laughs> <laughs> I take the good, you take the bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I you know, I, I think that, I thought the Gio Bernard, Deion Lewis picks were really nice picks. Those are the, those are the types of players that uh, you know Michael Sofano in the 12 spot should have been sna- snagging as much as he could, and he didn't get them. You, you need those like those pass catching guys that are going to get you 10 yeah. points a week. And, uh, in a so, pinch. Yeah, so it was kind of a, like a luxury for Shaw that he got them, and but it's the luxury he didn't get was good receivers. So it's too bad that he didn't get any good receivers. You know, Jeff. I mean, he Jeff, would probably contend that he got good receivers. He shouldn't though. <laughs> I mean, seriously, he 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 part of a fantasy, so he knows. Yeah. I mean, he knows. I mean, it's I mean, they're you know, award-winning well, projections, by the way, at DraftSharks.com. They're, they're fantastic site. I love it. Uh, but Jeffrey and Watkins, what are, what's their upside? I mean, seriously, what do you think Jeffrey's upside is? Receiver. 20 in in Watkins is receiver. No, 24. no, I think Jeffrey could finish higher than that. He could, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a there's a spectrum of possibilities, and I think maybe not Watkins. There's a lot of spectrum <laughs> that where he finishes below right, that. So yeah. I, I think that that's the problem. I actually like the Tyrell Williams pick a lot. I'm, a, I'm kind of a big Tyrell Williams. Really? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think he was underutilized, and I think he's a decent player. He's good size, uh, and. Derek Carr, even hey, with you the always did like Tyra Williams with yeah. the Chargers. I forgot about that. Yeah, okay. I, like, I, I still like him. I, and he's in a, he's 27 in the prime of his career. And they should be throwing the lot, uh, the ball a lot in Oakland, uh, no question this year. All right, uh, final FFPC Joe of the evening. It's Richie, Richie Nishura here as we move forward with James Conner, Kenyon Drake, Adrian Peterson, Chris Thompson, Kareem Hunt, and Gus Edwards at running back. Keenan Allen, Julian Edelman, Cooper Cup, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Larry Fitzgerald, Emmanuel Sanders, and Marquise Goodwin at receiver. Zach Ertz and Jack Doyle at tight end. Uh, kicker is Dan Bailey. Uh, quarterbacks are Luck, uh, Lamar Jackson, Marcus Mariota, and then the Vikings defense. So I, I like the fact uh, I'm going to steal your thunder here. Get three quarterbacks by round 15, A+. Plus. Nice work there. Um, the, uh, you know, to have Jack Doyle as your backup, I think it's fine, but I would have liked to see a, another tight end in there somewhere. I think the receiver depth is, is admirable to, to get Emmanuel Sanders as what your six. I think that's a job well done there. Um, I'm not a fan of the running backs though with, with Connor and then Drake is your number two. Okay. That's all right. Value. But then AP is your three and then it drops off to Chris Thompson, Kareem Hunt, who won't be available until week 10. And then Gus Edwards, who knows what his role is going to be. I think the running backs are the problem I have with this team, Dave. Other than that, I, I think that it, it's going to be pretty competitive. You know, so what he did is he really sacrificed running back depth and, and yeah. you can see it here, but he did it. You know, so, okay. So you have Connor as your one, right? Drake, who, you know, there's a little bit of uncertainty, but whatever, he's your number two. And you have Peterson slash Chris Thompson as your number three. That's actually not all that bad. You say right? Peterson and Chris Thompson is your three. Right. Peterson slash Chris Thompson is your three. So, I mean, like the, some part of the Redskins offense. So, if Geis, oh, so let's just say Geis has a complication. Let's say his ACL gets flared up. Now you actually have three solid running backs. And look at your receivers. Keenan Allen, Edelman, Cup, MVS, Fitz, Sanders coming back off injury. That's pretty darn good. And then you have Andrew Luck, Lamar Jackson with Ertz, too. Right. A lot of times these early tight end teams get discounted because people forget that Ertz is a 100-catch player. I actually like his team quite a bit. I think it's pretty solid. It may not finish first. It, it, it may, I, mean, I should say it may not finish fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth. It might finish twelfth, or it might finish. First. I don't think it finishes twelfth. But I'm just saying there's a chance though that it's not going to just you know. Well, you're right. It probably won't finish twelfth. But, but I mean, think about it. He has Luck and Earth. That's pretty good. And his receivers are really, really good. And he has Connor. So I, I actually like the way this team turned out for him. I, I, I really I, do. High floor, high ceiling, I think, on this, on exactly, this game. Exactly, that's the point. Yeah, no, totally the point. By the way, I should, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. 4for4.com is John Paulson just grabbed Rob Gronkowski in the 20th round, Dave. <laughs> FYI, nice. yeah. eight more rounds of action, and he's grabbing Gronk now. Yeah, he's got four mm-hmm. tight ends. Uh, final team we're going to go through tonight is Michael Salfino from TheAthletic.com. Chris Carson, Lamar Miller, Miles Sanders, Matt Breida, Alexander Madison at running back. Uh, receivers are Devontae Adams, Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, Stephon Diggs, Tyler Boyd, Robert Foster. Uh, tight ends, Jordan Reed, Greg Olson, TJ Hawkinson. Quarterbacks, Trubisky, Josh Allen, and Andy Dalton. 
definitely like the quarterbacks. I think, um, you know, the fact that you wait till not, round nine to grab a tight end and you still get Reed Olson and Hawkinson, job well done there. Uh, the receivers are the best in the league, no question. But can the running backs cobble enough stats together over the course of a 16-week season between Carson, Miller, Sanders, Breida, and Madison to matter? That is going to be the million-dollar question or the main event question, as it were. No, there's a, actually there's a lot I love about this team. He did a, I think he did a spectacular job of grabbing t- about of handling the tight ends and quarterbacks, um, and having waited so long. He waited super long, further than I would have waited. I, I couldn't have waited that long probably, but he did a great job. Reed Olson Hawkinson, that's actually a really good tr- uh, trio. Uh, Trubisky, Josh Allen, Andy Dalton, that's again a really good combination for best ball. That's really solid. And then Chris Carson and Lamar Miller. I didn't like the Miles Sanders pick so much, but I mean, what, you know, what were your other choices? It was actually like Jalen Samuels, Jordan Howard, uh, Freeman. So maybe I would have taken Howard over Sanders, but whatever. So, um, and his receivers are fantastic. I know he, he only has uh, six of them now, but uh, they're really, really good. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think Selfino. This is again another nice squad. I think this overall, this uh, week, this week four, whatever, this you know, night four. Right. I think a lot of there's a lot of really good drafts here. Nice job by everybody. Yeah, I think I think so too. Dave, just final question on on Selfino's draft. Um, if you went five receivers to start off, would you have waited until round twenty for another one? Um. Maybe I probably would have squeezed one in somewhere. One I'm not more, exactly okay. sure where right. though. But fair enough. Like I said, it's tough though when you're grabbing three uh, three uh, tight ends and three quarterbacks to do that. I want to thank our callers of the, for this evening. Our guest Darren Armani from uh, Pros Pros versus Joe's Nation, as he's the one who puts it on the Godfather of the Pros versus Joe's. The FFPC Dave Gerzak, our producer and mutual friend Rob, audio engineer Bryce, and most of all, each and every one of our listeners. We will be back with more drafting action tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. The I Must Break You League Number Five. Uh, the Joes in that one, a uh, few former guests here, David Scioto and Frank Renner, uh, Michael Apt and uh, Justin Smiley, uh, Adam Krautwurst, Nate Wegman, uh, Dan Williamson, John Gifford, who you just heard on Friday, and then Richard Lowe, and then making up the pros from the Quant Edge, it's going to be uh, Todd Burrows, Todd from PA, uh, Matt Kelly, our good buddy Matt Kelly from playerprofiler.com, former overall champ. Mike Beers from rotoviz.com, uh, Jeremy Brown from Dynasty Fantasy, excuse me, dynastyfootballfactory.com, Big Guy Fantasy Sports, Bob Long, and then of course, and more, our friend <laughs> from uh, 4 for 4, Peter Overzet is going to be drafting oh, yeah, tomorrow Peter. as well. That's very nice. Yeah, so that'll be fun. That's 9 8 Central tomorrow. So go on and uh, check. By the way, I should mention this. Dave Gerzak, in his infinite wisdom, was able to send out an FFPC email roughly an hour ago. With the main event early draft slots one day early. Check that to see where you're drafting in the FFPC main event. Uh, thanks to him for getting that out. Make your plan a Hollywood reservation. Sign up for the main event. Try to win a half million bucks this year. Plenty of sats, dynasty, and uh, more. Uh, Football Guys Players Championship Draft at MyFFPC.com. Your week officially starts now. This has been another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com that was broadcast live and heard around the world. Eric and Dave will be back next week with more analysis, interviews, and advice from a guest much smarter than they are. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you again next week. We're on the floor, even more so if we on tour. Me and E explore the country, wondering about the evening before. Trying to explain where the time went. Well, other rappers find a studio to grind in. You know, we, we're in season eight of this show. And when we totally, the I got five on boards at the end of every year, um, you are up four to three on me right now. Um, this year? Or what? No, no, no. Well, like season by season. You've won four seasons. I've won three seasons. And I think I would be up seven nothing right now. But I, I figured out your little game. What you do is I set these over-unders and you pounce on them like a monkey into a cupcake. And, and, and what the hell is a monkey, monkey into Because you ever put a cupcake in front of a monkey, it goes crazy. <laughs> and uh, they're like, oh, let's just put five on it, Balky. And then know. I don't even put any thought into it. I'm like, ah, you know, I'll do it for the show or whatever. Um, I, I oh, feel you're, like, you're sacrificing no, it for the no, show. No, no, yeah, because oh, you're, so, you're such a, yeah. you're like, you know, you're, what do they call that? Uh, I don't know, a person who gives away a lot I, of money? No, I think you're, I'm a philanthropist. Yeah, you're, you're a, I'm a fantasy philanthropist. You're a podcast philanthropist. I'm a philanthropist. podcast philanthropist. <laughs> and here, what you do, is you, you go out DiCaprio and incept my brain, put, putting this like, you know what? I, I think I could convince Balky that not only will he agree to this bet, but that it is, it is his idea. And then I would get smoked on all these bets every single year. Well, it's amazing that you've run so close after I've been luring you 
you know, like a 12 year old with a lollipop. No, like into like, all these well, clearly I'm making the smart ones and it's the ones you trick me into doing <laughs> that, that have cost me. It's going to, I'm going to tie you up. after. Yeah, this yeah. Don't, don't go into my white van over here. My stalker white van by the river, man. Yeah. Stay away. Oh, trust me. I will. I, I've learned my lesson. Hey little boy. Yeah. No, not going to work this time, buddy. <laughs> 9, 8 central tomorrow, people. Thanks for listening.